We're live. Go get it, We're big dog. Live. All right, everybody. Welcome to this episode of the show at Fish North Georgia. It's Thursday night, and we are uh, looking forward to spending a couple hours with you guys out talking fishing and uh, just having some general nonsense and fun and whatever else we can get into. So let's we, do uh, it. Mr. Mr. Paul Coonan is with me. Hello, everybody. Uh, right now, and we are um, got a little bit of a different type of show tonight. We're going to do something um, a little different, kind of like two shows in one. All right, so first part of the show, we're going to talk about the uh, hot baits on the on North Georgia lakes right now. I've been uh, spending the day talking to a lot of guys, getting a lot of opinions, and trying to see uh, what you need to throw if you go to any of these lakes tomorrow. It's what you should be throwing. And in the second half of the show, uh, we're going to have Andy Middleton and Travis Dawkins. Dawkins. I want to make sure I got that out. He is uh, He's with Peach State Kayak Anglers. And uh, is that correct? Did I yeah. say that right? Travis is with Peach State. And uh, I don't know if Andy is. I don't know if he's. A he's affiliate. fishing pretty much national everything. He does that. Yeah. Okay. I mean, he does some local as well, but I don't know if there's a, a single club that he's. That he belongs to. Affiliated. We'll find out when we'll he gets We'll find here. out. So um, they're going to come in right, roughly about halfway through the show. And uh, they both just competed on Hartwell and actually did very well this past weekend. So uh, a little bit of kayak stuff tonight, and, of course, you get some Hartwell news in there as well. So uh, let's take care of business. As always, this episode is brought to you by State Farm and the Cassidy Agency, and our local agent, Chase Epley, can help you with all your insurance needs. Uh, guys, from kayaks to your home and business, he can do it all, and he has a product and can custom tailor your uh, your insurance needs for you everybody's a little bit different uh but chase is definitely he's one of us definitely give him a call at 678-779-7269 and tell him that the guys from fish north georgia sent you and also fish north georgia would like to thank our friends at nofo bruco uh if you like craft beer friendly atmosphere food trucks uh even some cornhole and if you're into uh right now on on the table we have a uh Beer called Collateral. It is a Mexican style lager that they have been so kind to uh, provide us with. And actually, it's very good. It's getting, it high, quite good. getting high marks tonight from us. Just up 400, a little north of coming. And uh, just again, Nofo Bruco. Tell them again, the guys from Fish North Georgia sent you. And uh, we're contemplating in our mind, uh, trying to set something up. Uh, maybe a, 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 what did you a, call it? A, a meet and greet. A meet and greet, a Fish North Georgia night at, uh, at Nofo and just see. Uh, Try to get it to where we all can meet in person. We'll go play some cornhole or something. You know, everybody can meet. Uh, it'd be good to put a uh, face to the name, uh, as always. So we'll have to watch the uh, the big bugs flying around here tonight. It is the summertime, and they get in here, and they <laughs> love the lights. Uh, every one of you guys uh, in the comment section, hello. Uh, glad to see you. Uh, it's really nice It's really nice to look up at that, uh, at that monitor right there and see the familiar names of people that we know are going to show up and uh, take part of this. So guys, we really do appreciate all that you do. We also got a little new segment tonight too, called stump Paul in which uh, I had several of uh, fish North Georgia group members uh, message me questions. All right. And what we're going to start doing is, you know, Paul's pretty smart. All right. He, he is one of the smarter guys I know, and uh, we're going to see if we can stump him. And, and if your question stumps them we've got some co-field customs uh that we're going to send your way so uh, i went ahead so and if, if i get it right if you get it right hey do, nobody do i get do i get the co-field customs sure oh Would that'd be good all right I, hey so here's the promise we got a little skin in the game now that's right he does not know what we're doing so uh definitely um definitely uh it, this ought to be pretty good just see if we can stump him but i've already chosen the question and it's a good question it's one that i did not know and so I think it'd be pretty cool for you guys to, to hear as well. So if you're watching on Facebook tonight, we went ahead and, and put it back on the, the group page uh, for tonight. And if you want us to know your name in the comment section, Paul, what do they need to do? They need to go to www.streamyard.com backslash Facebook. Put that name in. We'll be able to see it and we'll be able to say hello. That's right. Absolutely. So just like this. Hi, Tatum. Hey, Tatum. And I, yeah, absolutely. Uh, definitely glad that you're able to uh, say, hey, daddy, tonight. So Tatum was in a little bit of a car wreck last night. So one of them calls that parents don't want to get, but we're all fine. The big guy upstairs. Definitely watching over her. Uh, Jeff Cash. Hey, guys. I also, yeah, I had written down. I wanted to. Uh, we're going to have it in the banner going across. But uh, Jeff Cash and David Beatty actually won our elite tournament this past Saturday down at Black Shoals. Uh, 17. What was it, Josh? 
seventeen eighty five. We think I think That's it was strange. seventeen. Uh, solid strength. Very solid on a very tough day. Yeah, very tough day. Uh, that was a, a drifter. Like it's it's hard to catch fish when it's flat out like that. And it's you know that high bluebird skies yeah. and all that. And it was, um, but they they had a great day, outstanding. And they're a couple of good dudes. So uh, glad to see them get the win. And uh, we appreciate you, Jeff, joining in tonight. So uh, again, everybody, Sammy, all you uh, guys up there, Ty Patterson. Uh, Justin Spees, good to see you. Daryl, I see you. There's a there's a big old trophy in the way. I don't know why that trophy is right there, but uh, would you would you mind? Could you could you get that trophy for me if oh, you don't mind? Oh, um, do not to show it? it off. No, I just oh, want to oh. be able to make sure I don't miss anybody in the comment section right yeah, there. Sure, so. you don't. The one time, listen, not, not, that's the blind. That is the like blind. Right hey, there. you can leave it right there for all I can. That's fine. <laughs> that is that blind hog found an acorn that day. Up on Rocky Mountain. There you go. We'll move it up right there. So, all right, anyway, let's get to the topics. Uh, topic tonight. So this is what I did. Um, in thinking uh, that our guest, uh, they were going to arrive a little later tonight and uh, definitely got some parental duties that they're doing, and that's that's awesome. So, um, you know, Paul and I kind of mulled over some things to talk about, and, you know, I started talking to people, and, you know, and I was asking a question. If, if you had to go – tomorrow to any of these lakes in north georgia and you're throwing one bait what are you throwing and uh, what is the hot bait on every one of these lakes and so we got some big lakes and we got some of these electric only reservoirs and we even got a river uh little river special thrown in there so what i'm gonna do is i am going to give you the lake i'm going to give you the most popular bait of what i was told by everybody today and we're going to let paul do a little prognostication on it oh big word no, oh, that's, that's my kind of word. That, well, good. Maybe you can prognostication, prognostication, pontification. Uh, ask Paul about keeping his hand off the tail. You stumped me, huh? He he stumped me with that one. He stumped. I don't know that. anything about keeping my hand off the tail. Well, that, that must have so, something to do with the kayak measuring system, correct? It, it does. It does. Um, so they got all these special rules, and sometimes you can overlook them because that dude in uh, Texas ruined it for all of us. Justin Spees, what did you finish with, Danny? Uh, finished what what are you talking about so anyway if you're talking about for the tournament we had what do we have josh eight. eight something we did not finish last how about that it helps when people leave the tournament early uh, a little bit <laughs> but actually it was a really tough day and uh what was funny on black shoals is um where is black shoals black shoals is on conyers okay down around conyers it's 600 something acres here's the problem with black shoals uh the lake the gate does not open till like eight it's it's worse than latham and if you're running a tournament, That's saying something. If you're running a tournament, by the time you get it, and it's got one ramp and a big long, I mean, it, it's just it's not the easiest place to load and unload to get a lot of boats. Nice lake, don't get me wrong. Nice lake got a lot of moss in it and everything, but uh, fish were still on bed, and that is a, a lot of the uh, reports that I've been getting on these lakes tonight. You're going to hear a little bit of about bed fishing, which is pretty interesting. Um, so, uh, Ron, hot baits, top water, any variety you want to throw, and the shaky head. Uh, with the hot weather coming in this week, and hopefully we will be getting back to a more normal seasonal pattern. Yeah, it's been a little bit different. The weather here in North Georgia has been a couple of weeks ago. It was in the fifties, and I think that you know some places are going to hit ninety Over this the weekend. weekend. I saw hit, that. He'll hit ninety this week. After weekend. it was, well, I don't know. We were camped out at Charlie Elliott last weekend before hard labor, and it was forty-five or forty-two when we got up in the morning. Right. Yeah, well, that's nice. So that's, that's May weather in Georgia, isn't it? It is. It is. And and you actually, I saw somewhere we normally hit ninety about a week later than what we're going to do this year. So we're going to be about a week early, but still, it's been a yo-yo ride. So um, definitely, definitely getting ready to get hot. So anyway, here's what we're going to do. We're going to start off. Um, I'm going to start off in reverse order. Than what I started. Of course, I you know when I was the first uh, lake I started with today getting uh, a report with uh, a report for is Lanier, but I think I'm gonna save it for last. What do you think about that? Now here, here we're gonna start off with Eufaula. Now, I know that's not a North Georgia lake, but there is a big BFL coming uh, this weekend down there. Correct? All right. Is that is it is it Eufaula? I think it is. I think it's Eufaula. And uh, I had, was it farmer and, and tanker down there, I think they are down there at least they at least they are down there. All right. And uh, so uh, and I did not ask either one of those. So this answer did not come from either one of those. It also did not come from uh, Jesse Millsaps either, uh, but from a uh, fourth angler. And I said, what is the hot, hot bait on you follow right now? And the answer I got was the swim jig. 
the swim jig, preferably and, in white. And you're sure that wasn't Jesse? I promise you it was not Jesse Millsap, but he said why a white swim jig. Now, uh, 90s that you follow this weekend. So, yeah, it, it's definitely going to be going to be hot down there, Nathan. So, swim jig, do you throw a swim jig? Yes, absolutely. All right, what are you targeting with a swim jig? Um, what do you think they're targeting with down on Eufaula? I mean, right now, um, I've never been to Eufaula, but we're coming to the end of the spawn. Obviously, a swim jig is a really good bluegill imitator. Mm -hmm. And so you're betting fish. Everybody knows they don't like a bluegill. Right. Um, bluegill steal the eggs. They'll eat the fry. So they'll defend that nest. Um, so you can present that way as, as a nest raider. Or, and that's part of what makes a swim jig so good, right, is they're super, super versatile. Yes. So we're moving now into the brim spawn, where the mm -hmm. brim are getting getting ready to get up on bed as well and so you can fish that same jig around those areas and catch those post spawn fish that okay. are prowling and and hoping to snatch a meal absolutely and lily pads charles ashley show now how you doing big guy uh lily pads so i guess you follow has the lily pads um, I get and the alligators, alligators too. and all kinds alligators of stuff too so um i need to get down there i'm i'm curious sounds about. like a road trip so there we go so you follow swim jigs all right now here's another one that uh we're moving back up north uh, and the reason that I use this is I know a lot of guys uh, fish this uh, neck of the woods right here. want to make sure we get the Rome guys in there. Coosa River slash Brushy Branch. You ever fish there? Never been to Brushy. I have. I have. We, I, and I actually kind of like it. it it's it's, it's too got a rep. It's got a rep. You get out in the river, and if the river, if the current's going, it, it really produces, or you can get up in some of these creeks. Uh, so definitely uh, the swim jig is a staple this time of year on your fall. There you go. I appreciate that, Lee Strickland. Uh, so, sounds like my guy, my source, had it right. Um, my source on the Coosa River slash Brushy Branch, uh, he was very specific. Missile Bates D bomb, black and blue. What pitching. Do you think? He's pitching. pitching. He's pitching. What? Or he's flipping. All right, for those that well, don't know what a uh, missile Bates D bomb is, what is it? Um, missile was really hot. It's, I guess it's been a couple of years. There mm -hmm. was a time when missile was like the thing to throw. Right. Um, I think it was probably shortly before just the explosion of custom plastics that we see now where everybody, mm -hmm. everybody's got every big lake has a guy that's doing um, 15,000 different kind of plastics. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but a D bomb is essentially, it's like a ribbed kind of beaver style, like a crawl imitator. Someone will have to correct me. I don't know if they kick or not. Um, but they've got the two tails at the back and I, I, they may flap. Okay. Um, similar to, uh, like a strike King, like a rodent. Right. Or, um, reaction innovations, like a sweet beaver. Something similar to that. Um, and I imagine they're on the river that he's just okay. picking. They do kick. So in, in they do kick spot. some. They do okay. kick some. And, and just real quick, Rocky mountain is on the list. It is coming up. So stay tuned. So I would say right now that's a good you got a good crawl imitator going there and you picking apart structure. I would okay. Think. All right. That's it. Sounds good to me. I'm, I, I'm taking a shot in the dark there. Someone if if I'm getting it wrong, somebody tell me so. That's right. Yeah. And listen, in the comments, definitely <laughs> you guys listen. This is what one person said. If you got something that's hotter and you don't you don't mind throwing it out there, throw it out there. And uh again, if if just like this with the D bomb, if there is a specific way you like to throw it, uh feel free to uh Put that in the comments, and we'll definitely, definitely let everybody, uh, we'll announce it, let everybody see it. You'll have uh, to get in touch with me about that catfish bite out there, Daryl. I'd, I'd like to check it out. Oh, Daryl's out there. Well, Daryl, we're always looking forward to going catfish with you, uh, catfishing with you, which uh, that was a great time, and, and we will have some uh, footage of that coming out uh, in the in the future. So, all right, the next lake, now this is one that we're going pretty north, Burton. Now, everybody knows Burton's got Burton, the reputation. Burton chain. Burton, Burton's got the reputation for some big, big, big spots. At least that's what, what I've seen. Um, so here's what I was told uh, by my source. I like doing this. I feel like I'm in a, in the press <laughs> or by my source. Because I did tell everybody I'm not going to share Anonymous your names. sources. I'm not sharing your names because, you know, some people get really mad uh, when they say a thing. Uh, decked out John Boats. How you doing, bud? Uh I'm going to assume that's Brett. Good to see you tonight. I uh, appreciate you tuning in. Uh, Josh Tatum, big Peach State tournament on Burton Chain Saturday. Okay, well, here you go. All right. This is what I was told. 
Top water. Okay, top water is the thing going on right now in Burton. I got a double bladed buzz bait. Double bladed buzz bait. And this guy got specific in a half ounce. Uh did not give me the color. He did not give me the color. And then he said a Sammy. All right. And what I was told with uh, on the Sammy was you can kind of, if they're following it up, you can kind of switch over to the buzz bait. You can use them inter interchangeably. But right now they're catching some big, big fish on Burton on top water. So what do you think about that? Which would you throw? Would you throw a double bladed buzz bait? I myself, I, I, I don't, I don't throw them very often. I, I'm not never been much of a buzzbait guy. I'd try Old school it. double buzz. That's I'd, right. I'd try it though. Um, buzzbait's got a reputation. The big fish bait. Uh, Burton, if you wanted to go catch a giant, I'd give it a go. That's the light. Starting, I'd start out with it at least early that early morning. I'm color wise, I'd probably go white. There's two colors, buzzbait, right? It's white and black. That's what Andy Middleton says. Actually, there's, Andy Middleton says who will be on here later says there's one color and it's black. Black. Yeah, that's what he says. He's black. Absolutely does. Uh, uh, but that, I mean, that Sammy is a Sammy's a spot killer. It is uh, anywhere you throw it. It's a spot. Killer. It is. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, big tournament coming up there this uh, this Saturday. So that'd be awesome to keep up with. And uh, I pull look, look at. Shh. Hey, listen, the beautiful thing about this is, Charles, is I'm not fishing in that tournament. I'm just here to help you guys do the best you can possibly do. That's what I, that's what I'm trying to do tonight. Uh, I pulled a three pound, 14 ounce. Tw let's see, 20 and a quarter inch. 20 and on, a quarter. That's a good fish. On Burton yesterday. Yeah, that's, that's, a good that's fish. when you'd like to get five of those. Yeah. No, five of those and you're five of those, you're probably in the money. Four check, pack, pack check, paycheck. Absolutely. So that's you, awesome. You're getting a dub with five of those. That's good. So yeah, that's, so you're getting about a hundred inches out there. Yeah. yeah. No, that's a that's that's stout. That's a big time string in Florida or Texas. Really? Okay. Yeah. So there you go. Learning that, learning that kayak lingo there. Big time. All right. So here's one that kind of shocked me. All right, everybody knows about hard labor. So hard labor creek, big, like twelve hundred acres, something like that, down social circle. Um, when I got this answer, it was not what I was expecting. Excuse me. So I was expecting something moving, uh, reaction bait. But I was told right now, the best bait going on hard labor. And again, you guys feel free to debate this because that's what's beautiful about this. You can debate it shaky head all right and actually i was given two colors green pumpkin which i think everybody yeah you know, man, hell you can't go wrong with it <laughs> green pumpkin it's hard to mess up green it's pumpkin. hard to mess up green pumpkin hard to mess up green but pumpkin. this one is one that i thought kind of kind of shot me a pb and j color combination on a shaky head now i have thrown pb and j i have i don't even know who makes that how do you yeah like a I don't pbj know. worm yeah like a like a prism I get. Now I've seen it in the Ned rig. Oh, it's a real, you've seen the you know yeah. you've seen the Ned rig. This guy. Oh, where it's like the swirl. It's. I mean, I guess it's a laminate. It's like the swirl three. with the black flake. Well, I guess it's got the purple hmm. and 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 the brown and yeah, a little bit. That's in it. Z Man does that, I think. Well, that might be. So I was told right now, shaky head on hard labor, green pumpkin, and PBJ. Uh, Zoom. Thank you, Ron. Uh, Zoom makes one. So Rage makes PBJ plastic. Interesting. So, uh, so that I, I think that you know I actually thought. To be honest, I actually, I actually thought that you know, hard labor's got some big bass in it, and I just figured it would be a reaction bait. So when I when yeah. I got that answer, not that it wouldn't work, I was just like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I can see it, but it was not what I was expecting. It's a little more finessey than you, exactly. And that's 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 I wasn't expecting that. You never know. That could be one of those boss like half ounce five aught like extra wide gap shaky heads well, too. You, you just fish bugs. You just fished uh, hard labor. We did. So how 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 did hard labor blah, 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 hard um, labor go? I love we, live. You can, there's no dubbing in live. Yeah, no, we uh we had a lot of the same experience that y'all had on Black Shoals. Mm -hmm. It was high skies. It was still for most of the day. Um, lake was a lot clearer than I expected. Okay, I I expected that lake to have some color in it. It was clear where we were at. How much visibility you had? Um, at least five or six feet. Gotcha. In places, I like the backs of the pockets had some color, but out gotcha. in the out in the main lake, it was it was clear. It was properly clear. Um, I like that properly clear. Properly clear. I was kind of <laughs> that's like <laughs> when you start when you start to talk about like Latham. Latham is properly. It clear. can be. You, like, you get twenty feet of yeah, yeah, ten yeah, feet of I've seen it even deeper than that. So uh, yeah. Um, but we had uh, the winner. Um, congratulations, Greg, on your your first win. 
um, said that he got his with a swim jig. Uh, brim colors work in the brush. I got my fish mostly on a weightless uh, Senko. Mm -hmm. um, just kind of pitch invisible cover. Um, and uh, from what I heard, it was kind of a very finessey, finessey sort of day. Gotcha. And it's with no wind and, and kind of nothing going on, on in that high pressure system. It's just, gotcha. you're going to fish slow. Absolutely. Uh, I was surprised not to see any bed fish there. So here, here's something that I find really interesting, guys. Now, um, uh, that's not to say that there weren't, but I just didn't see You any. didn't see it. And, yeah. and the bed fishing this year has been really messed up, in, in my opinion. Now, we all know they come in stages. Uh, and you got your early ones, you got your late ones. But I know that Josh and them fished an elite tournament. Uh, I had to work that day, so I didn't get to go. I wish I had gone because it, it, evidently it was really fun. But they got on bed fish, and that was in what, but mid-March? Yeah. So mid-March on hard labor, bed fish. All right, we just fished Black Shoals, and it's mid-May. Yeah. They're not that far apart as the crow flies. Bedfish. Yeah. And you will hear in some of these lakes coming up, bedfish. So um, I don't know if that's normal. They're taking normal. their time this year. They are. Listen, you know, I don't, I don't know what they're taking, but they're doing whatever it is. It's a long time. So I, I'm really kind of shocked. Either, either normally it's really early or kind of late. Yeah. And it's just – so with that, that is big uh... – the big fronts coming through, I think, kind of maybe so. I don't spaced know. Spaced them out a little more, maybe. It, it definitely sh it shocked me to see the ones at Black Shoal, and I think it shocked a lot of people. I don't think they were expecting that bite. Um, Tatum got his on a True Grit jig. Just saying, hey, listen, yeah, hey, I heard that rumor. True Grit, I know we can get those things too. So, uh, Fall Crawl, hey, listen, you can get Fall Crawl, and I, I might as well go ahead and tell you right now after this show. It ain't 100% built, but it is active. TrueGritTackle.com. You can go there and start purchasing True Grit jigs. And we're going to be adding a lot of jigs to that over the next uh, week. So we've got a lot of colors coming. We've got our basics on there. Uh, mostly skip cast right now, but we will be putting in the brush hogs, the football heads, uh, the bladed jigs. All that's coming. And while I'm at it, we've got a True Grit Tackle Instagram now. You can go follow us there. Uh Ryan was helping with that. What's the what's the handle of that? Is it just True Grit Tackle? I believe True Grit it's Tackle. Just True Grit Tackle. And we got a Twitter for you guys to do Twitter at True Grit Tackle. You can do that. Join both of those. Uh, no, I haven't talked about Latham yet, Michael. I'm saving it towards down the bottom. Uh, I, I am going to get to that. So, but anyway, guys, so uh, check out True Grit Tackle. We actually changed some of the prices too. I think you'll be kind of pleased, and you have the choice of a band or tournament grade copper tide. So definitely go there and check it out. TrueGritTackle.com after this show and uh like i said we at will true good tackle at true good tackles That's instagram cool. and so like i said we will be uh we will be adding to that website weekly all right so we just got it up and running it is available to purchase right now and then you can purchase them and we'll get them mailed right out to you so anyway let's get back on it so staying close to canton right here uh hickory log a lot of people call it dinkery log Dink or whatever dinkery log dinkery log but somebody caught a big one this past week there um and i heard the name of the gentleman that caught it uh true grit swim jig available yes we do but you, you might want to message me directly i won't be able to put it on there till uh tomorrow but i do have swim jigs i just don't have the picture and have it on there yet so if you want one hit me a message on facebook and i will tell you what i can do what's up brett matthews great guy hope all is well you fishing the uh bfl this weekend on your follow uh, if you are, let me know, Brett. So um, my big bass from Hartwell Hobie BOS, which is? The Hobie Bass Open Series. That's right. There you go. Uh, just pulled up, and she was full of eggs. So it's been a crazy year for, yeah. for bass uh, this year on the bed. So um, Hickory Log, I actually had two reports. Now, the one, uh, and I, I'm not going to say the gentleman's name, but uh, he does do reports, and the guy's one of the more honest guys. Uh, that I see, he was throwing a, and he was very specific, a Mega Bass Vision 110 in Tennessee Shad. What do you think about a Mega Bass 110? I love to throw a 110. You like that? I, so. Very it took, versatile. It took me a long time to get over the price tag. <laughs> right, right. But uh, I love to throw a 110. Uh, also, I got some reports on Hickory Log. They're still on bed. So I, if I'm not mistaken, I think Electric Bass Opens has a tournament there uh, coming up this Saturday. Uh, bedfish could still be in play right there. So, um, 
leaving at 4 a.m. in the morning. So, hey, Brett, be rooting for you. And uh, let me know how you do, buddy. And uh, what's up, Daniel Duckett? Eric Thurman, how are you doing? Uh, another of our great followers, and we appreciate seeing you there. So here's one that kind of, I mean, I, I, I knew it was, um, I knew this was something that everybody throws there. And, but I was surprised. I figured that this would get a different, uh, different response uh, just because I, I figured the guy would be saying something different. But Rocky Mountain, okay, Rocky Mountain, A-Rig, A-Rig on Rocky Mountain. And the reason was, the reason was post-bomb bass chasing Shad. Uh, right, so that, that's what I got. But, you know, it's funny that an A-Rig, um, an A-Rig at Rocky Mountain uh, in January and February is the ticket. Is the ticket. And now we're in May. Mid eighties post spawn, a rig can't go wrong with a rig. I mean, they're coming out of the, they're coming out of the post spawn funk, and they're they're looking to get their energy back up, and they're looking to put weight on. School of Shad swims by. I'm, makes sense to me. It makes sense. Now here, here's like, the question: though. would you own own the a rig? And let's just say the a rig itself is fine. The trailers. Now, do we go with the big, thick, meaty, juicy? You know, Kai Tech three point eights. Or are we throwing the smaller ones, that kind of stuff? What would you Ooh. throw if, if you had to throw it right now? I mean, just based on the little that I know about Rocky, I'd probably go as big as I could get away with. There's, there's some gizzard shad that could feed a family <laughs> of four. I mean, there's, there's, there's I, I bet, big, that's why I'd do it. There's, there's some big gizzard shad. In fact, well, I mean, you think about big fish, right? I mean, big fish 101. Big fish wants biggest meal it can get with the least effort put forward. That's true. That's so true. I'd. I just feel like even if you went three eighths on the on your your arms, maybe you go with something like a four three on your your long on your out the back. Gotcha. Um, and just have that big big slow shad following the school. I, I tell you what, I, and, and this is just a little trick that I will not tell you the gentleman's name, and he might get mad at me for telling you this. But one good secret, I see what I would throw the four point three at Rocky Mountain, and Ron's um, from that area, so there you go. So I mean, it, it makes plenty of sense. Um. But boy, I tell you what, chunking an A rig with four threes on it all day. That's work. It's not always fun. It's work. You're you're putting in the work to do that right there. Um I, I, know, I still think you could go up there with a big glide bait and smash. You probably could. I was I wonder about how what often, would you throw if you had a, if you were going to Rocky Mountain right down your It was me personally. Bait, you personally. Um I would I would probably throw a glide bait. I'd I'd throw a one sixty eight waiver or I'd throw a an antidote or a sneaky Pete, a bait sanity antidote, I should say, or a, a G rat sneaky Pete and just kind of a generic, good generic shad color. Right. Um, I just, I feel like one, I have, that's a technique I have confidence in anyway, like just bringing it with me. Mm -hmm. as I feel like I'd have a good chance at a good one with that. Yeah. It's, and it's, you know, it sense. it's a, it's a time of year where, you know, they're looking for a big meal, you know, they're wanting to feed up. And it's just, they it goes together in in my mind it goes together you know and, and what i was going to say is there, there is a uh jigs have been better on rocky well cody pills there you go hey listen i appreciate you sharing that um and if you're really confident what colors just to help out your fellow uh anglers uh sweet bait daniel duckets i guess that's what he likes throwing right. um you know jigs on rocky yeah i can see that i can see that um not that I've had any luck on them, but I, I can see where that would be really awesome. But Cody, thank you very much for uh, for stepping up and doing that. So got one guy saying an A rig, got one guy saying jigs, and I think that's got a lot to do with um, a lot to do with your confidence, you know, and what yeah. kind of angler you are. Um, I don't really have confidence in either one of those baits. I throw an A rig <laughs> probably more than I throw a jig. Um, what if you're looking for quantity of bites on Rocky? Go somewhere else. Well, yes, yes. <laughs> I will say this. If you're looking for quantity of bites, you probably can just throw a shaky head in certain places. I'd say a shaky it. head or like a – when I was up there, and then granted this was October, there was a guy up there um, throwing crankbaits on those rock piles, and he was he was catching fairly regularly. I would say uh, – I can just say this. There's some really good spots. Uh, green pumpkin and PBJ. There you go. So, I mean, your standards. Definitely your standards. So, that that is – uh, that's pretty awesome right there. So thank you, Cody Peels. Drag a worm, Andy. That's what I was sitting there getting ready to say. There's plenty of places uh, on Rocky that you can just drag a shaky head 
And uh, unless you're uh, me, you'll do very well. Josh Little, Mr. Underspin. Mr. Underspin. That's what we're just going to call him from now on is Underspin. Yeah, Underspin will work anytime unless it's on mine. I, for some reason, have not had the luck on Underspins this year. Let's jump to the mighty Latham. The mighty, mighty Latham. The lake on the rebound, they say. Uh, we are, um, if a lot of you guys don't know, Latham is doing a tagging program. Uh, and if you, if, if, correct me if I'm wrong, for guys that are out there, if you catch a tag fish, they're asking you to measure it, uh, report where you caught it, and definitely release it okay. on site. Does that sound about right? Yeah, no, I was there. Uh, it's funny, I was there on Sunday. I actually saw, I didn't catch, but I saw a couple of tagged fish cruising around up shallow. Did you? Uh, yeah, know? no, hey, no. I, you I swear, you um, <laughs> you look at the the back of the dorsal, you'll see just a little white. You can see a little white like thread tag. There you go. Um, that, that's awesome. There was one right there at the ramp. I tried to catch him for about exactly. five minutes and couldn't get it. Uh, they're going to continue the tagging program uh, for a while now. And again, uh, we all know that you cannot tournament fish uh, in Latham as far as those that like to put them in the live well and have weigh ins and stuff like that. Uh, but definitely we want to, uh, Latham is, of course, it's, it's in my front yard. It is a lake I care a lot about, and I definitely want to see, even though I actually crappy fish and stuff more, when I do fish it, I like that aspect. Latham's got great fishing all around for all kinds of stuff. Uh, actually, um, Butler went over there for those guys that in, in the, uh, in the Dawson Lake. he went over there with a fly rod and they were, they caught some good brim. Big brim. Big brim. They caught some good brim. On, on the fly. So that's another thing that guys do. You know, you can do more than just catch bass. Um, here's what I got reported. Two things. Uh, one that I'm definitely sure. Well, actually, both of them. First of all, there's still bedded fish on Latham. Okay, guys. So make sure, you know, they are there. Make sure you, if you're going to fish them, take care of those fish and, and release them after you've had the fun with it. Uh, but again, bedded fish still. So two two reports. First off, if you're if you're a topwater guy, chug bug. Think Lake Lanier, chug bug, chrome and blue. It's exactly what 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 I was told. Chrome and blue chug bug. Uh, they did tell me where, but I ain't telling you. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, <laughs> and and here's one that I, I am not shocked at at all. Weightless wacky rig. So the wacky the Cinco, snack. Throw in the Cinco. Uh, again, just like Michael Temple says, yep. I've been killing them with a five inch Cinco. And yes, Mark wants the info. And for those of you that don't know, Mark is the lake manager over there. Very nice guy. He's actually an awesome guy, but you don't want him on your bad side. Let me just tell you that. So take care of his lake. He's very, very particular about his lake, but he's a super good guy. What's up, Mr. Gaten? Uh, I like that look. Um, be quiet about the glide bait up on Rocky. Hey, listen, he's just saying he might do it. And again, pork taco. Good. I knew I'd see you sooner or later. I hope your trip was great. Uh, look like you went out, uh, out West to see the boys. And so I'm glad to see you back. But again, Latham right now, as far as the weightless, uh, wacky rig, I was not given a, a specific color, but as in always, green oh, pumpkin works green, very green well. Pumpkin. Green pumpkin green works pumpkin. very well. Uh, I definitely, 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 uh, I like uh, your uh, like watermelon laminates work there good too. If you can get really? like a watermelon green white, like a kind of like a herring or whatever. Gotcha. I've, I've had some luck on that. All right, so I got I just had a report come in. All right, for this next lake, breaking uh, news. Breaking news. I'm not going to tell you who sent it, but that, that's what you get here on the uh, show at Fish North Georgia. Uh, for the next two lakes that we're going to do, uh, so I'm going to add these to this um, to this report. So we're going to go to Notley. Uh, we're getting up a little. We're going to do the next three lakes are going to be up the 515 corridor. We're going to go Notley, Chattooga, and Blue Ridge. And so, uh, again, won't tell you who's sending me this information. Give, give us Mr. Halsey's question here. What, 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 what do you like to, how do you do your wacky, your, okay, your, your so, wacky snack? Which, which, which way do you do it? So I tell you what, so I do, I, I do use an O ring. I will tell you one thing though, that, uh, Terry Adams, who, if you fish Latham for any amount of time, you run into Terry, you're going to know him. He's always unlocking the gate. He, uh, uses shrink tube. He actually takes some shrink tube, and that's what he uses. I pretty much am not that patient. I use I use that, but I do use a weightless VMC weeded uh, hook when I throw. They got the little bit. You of like weed the weed, the weedless, the little weed weed. Yeah, hook. with the mono. 
weed guard or whatever. Whatever it is. It's yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, it looks like the old school Eagle Claw weed card you used to get. Yeah. Stuff. No, but, that's funny. I just, um, I just started using those that they're like weedless Neko hook or whatever. Yeah. That is a wicked little hook. It is. Like it, it works really well. I've been impressed with it. It is. And I, I am not one. I know a lot of guys use that. They will take it. They rig it Nico style. They'll put the nail head up. I generally don't. Um, I like to throw it in there and I tell you what, um, awesome. And, and again, had a, had a gentleman you heard me talk sure. about it a few months skipping. You, you, you want me to give him some juice? Who's that? You want me to give him some juice? Give him some juice. If if you're going to do the wacky rig at Latham, go as light as you can get away with and make sure that you are laying it in from as far out yeah. as you can. Um, the just You want it to be the, the longest cast you can possibly make. The very end of that cast needs to be where you They're want to go. They're spooky fish. They are super spooky. Spooky fish. You will, you will help yourself out immensely. Clear water. Yeah, too. by yeah, by good. backing off and and trying to lay it in from further out. Um, so uh, that that's it. I, I it's I don't know how much is left in that. We might have to get the producer or produ Mr. Producery yeah. come back in here. Good enough for me. There you go. So uh, what lakes? Uh, basically nothing that that you fish too much. Uh, we did do you follow Derek? Uh, I don't know. BMC Nico is good. Uh, that's the one I use. I think I'm pretty sure that's the one I use. Uh, and I've had very good luck with it. I, I love the um. I just like doing. I like doing. A lot of guys like to wait on the on the wacky. I just the, like the it. Neko you know, or the the flick shake or whatever. I don't know what it's. Yeah, I've never really played with the the weighted like the jig head wacky. Uh huh. I feel like it defeats the purpose a little bit. Like you want that slow fall, right? So why do you? Put I think weight so. On it? I don't know. And plus, if you're fishing somewhere like Latham, it's got like grass anyway. Yeah, I would nice. not have been able to throw it. I, I caught a couple fish on it on Black Shoals this past weekend that I know that if I had it weighted. Yeah. That's a no. It's, you it's you need happening. to. There are some alternative rigging solutions. Absolutely. That that you can do there. Um, and, and and here's the thing, Michael. I don't know, and it, it depends on the person. I generally try to hook just the O ring. I try not to get any of the hook into the worm, and I don't know why. I don't know that it really matters. Some people kind of put it through the worm under the O ring. You got a preference? I I catch a little bit of the worm. Just I want to catch just you a little want bit to? of the worm. Yeah. Okay, just, which just I will a little say this, bit of meat. I did, I did a couple of times. Now the worms were older. I had been using them for a while, and, and yeah. they were Yamamoto, so you know they get a little worn, a little soft. And there was a couple of times I went and I chunked it, and you know, the worms, they they took off that way. So your best skips are right after the worm flies off the. It is absolutely. Hook, right? It's actually the only time it lands in the spot that I wanted to throw. <laughs> but I, the uh, weightless is awesome to skip with. That that's just that. Oh, yeah. Just put a split shot on the line if you want it to fall a little quicker. Hey, there, there you go. go. The split shot solves a, little, a lot of little problems. Bit of shot. Uh, Tyler Tyler Minix never fished the uh, weighted. Here we go. Here we go. The weighted wacky. I always try to get the lightest hook and line I can get away with. Uh, and, and listen, that's what I, that's what I do. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I just think. Um, well, I fished uh, hook wise. I fished little owner mosquito hooks for the longest time. Little like size ones. They work pretty good. Yeah. Oh, liked them. Liked them a lot. Um, the only reason I went to the the VMCs was looking for a little more weed resistance. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. Because obviously, I'd like to fish that open hook if I could. I feel like your your hookup ratio is a lot better. But Here, here's another thing too that I found. This is just me when I am fishing with that weedless and I'm throwing a wacky. With that ring, it's also very quick to boom, pull it off, and nose hook a fluke and throw it. It's just, it's very good. It's a very good, um, very good action on it. Steve, uh, by the way, uh, guys, if you want to know, we we have Sugar Hill Nuts now here at Fish North Georgia, and Mr. Steve Pinkston came up and he was so kind as to autograph. I got him to autograph his GON for me. Yeah, it was in GON. I'm gonna frame the little page. It's got his picture. Uh, surprise! Nobody's throwing a spinner bait. As not yet, and, and I'm a, I'll go ahead and be honest with you, it's not on the list. So I think spinner bait fishing kind of ebbs and flows. I think it's kind of fallen. It's it's a constant. It's always been there. Everybody can throw a spinner bait. The, guy, the it's guys not that sexy. The guys that like to throw one will always throw one. Absolutely. Yes. Um, and it, I think it does ebb and flow. Usually, it's about the time that some pro wins a big a big tournament on one. Right. All of a sudden, everyone's back into the spinner bait, right? Or you get you get Swindell holding it up with the Georgia blade, yeah, ultra vibe, ultra and also vibe. the ultra vibe, and everybody around here be throwing it. You know, yeah. 
because uh, we all have a. Uh, and then everybody, it's like anything that. else, though. It's it's there's no magic bullet, right? So everybody throws it and they throw it for a trip, and if they don't have instant success, right, it, it goes back in the box. Let, let me let me pull my report back up. Uh, Under, I had. highly underrated bait. It is Notley, right now. Uh, here's pretty interesting. Of course, we have uh, he did put wacky Senko, which we just we just spent some time talking about. Um, lucky gunfish, a gunfish. Tell everybody a little bit about a gunfish. A uh, gunfish is a little bit like a pencil popper. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you get the action of that stick bait with the cup face. You get it to really spit and move some water. Mm-hmm. Um, this is the time of year for it. I mean, Notley Herring Lake, I think. I don't know that Notley's got it. It may. It, it may. may. I don't know. I haven't fished it enough to know. And so it's it's top water. Everybody likes top water anyway. Gunfish, you can throw it a long way. Just bomb it down, down structure points, uh, rock walls, somewhere like that, and Get it moving. You move a lot of water, make a lot of noise. And call right. them in. And get them. Get them heated up. I love. I love our uh, comments. The banjo minna. <laughs> well, hey, listen. Hey, yeah. I what don't... What is a nose hooked fluke? A if nose... not a banjo minna, it is okay. It's it's, it's it the same. The banjo thing. minna. It's the same. Thing. <laughs> so that's what I'm gonna call it from now on. What are you throwing? The banjo minna. Uh, Casey Blanton, what's up? The night blade is fire right now. And uh, Georgia Blades Night Bay does get a lot of action. Absolutely. Got the big Colorados. Can, can confirm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, on Notley, Mr. Eric Payne, the fat Ica is hot. What is that? I have no idea what a fat Ica is. It sounds like a stripper, but we'll go with that. Just to, <laughs> listen, Mr. Payne, let me know what a fat well, Ica is. What part is. of Atlanta is she work? <laughs> yeah, seriously. Uh, Gunfish is great. Top water, very underrated. Yeah, and absolutely. So that was what that was what just came through. They were um, really hot on Lanier for a year or two, right? The sexy bait for a year. Yeah, yeah. It was like the Sammy was the 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 game winner on Lanier for a little bit. It too. was. Now, listen, Michael Temples. Nobody throwing a jackhammer. Of all the people I talked to, and even on the lakes we got left, not a first, not the first person said anything about a chatterbait. Not one chatterbait at all. Also on Notley, uh, before I got this latest report, this breaking news, uh, brim colored swim jigs. Shocking. Shocking right now, right? All right, so we're, <laughs> we're going to move just uh, up the road a, a bit. And, again, I'm going to uh, give the new thing. You might guys can figure out who gave me this report if you just listen to it. Uh, this is Chatoog. We're going to talk about Chatoog. Okay. Scrounger. Scrounger. I know exactly who gave exactly. you that report. And we're not going to say who it is, but a Scrounger. Uh, it's a Yamamoto hula grub with no legs. Interesting. And that's called a fat Ica. A fat, fat Ica. Fat Ica. Is so it's it would be kind of a crawl imitation then. Yamamoto palm tree bait fat Ica. I think is what my. Okay. But Eric Payne, who actually made the comment, said it's a Yamamoto hula grub no with no legs. Uh, <laughs> just like a tube. Okay, so there you go. It's killer in the laydowns. Interesting. All right, so there we go. So we're dropping right. dropping something there. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, absolutely. I'm, that's awesome. Got my right attention there. there. Definitely got our atten- our attention. Uh, so anyway, Chatoog, uh, of course, the report that just came in is a scrounger. And uh, the report that I had earlier, again, we've heard this several times, Chug Bug, Chrome, and Blue. Seems like Sp- a staple. Spot Lake, Her- Herring Spawn. There you go. <laughs> but, you know, Chatoog's got some pretty good largemouth in it as well. It does. Uh, but it has, some, it, does. it has some nice spots. So that's probably yep. what the, that guy is, a spot guy. Uh, I still can't get over the fat act, fat Ica though. That's awesome, <laughs> like that. Uh, but again, scrounger. You uh, you throw a scrounger a lot? I do not throw a scrounger a lot. Not as much as I should. Very I underrated mean, bait, you think? Um, what? Well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, and you guys, you guys comment on this. You got a scrounger, or you got a fish head spin? Ooh. What are you throwing? Each has it. Each has it, but you you only get to choose one. I'm going to go with the scrounger only because I think the fish head spin has been seen so many times. I- I'm just going to go with something different. Obviously, I would lean towards the fish head because it's a it's a 365 day bait. Like you can go out with the fish head pretty much. It is that's true. Any any day of the year and that is true. and do the right thing to get the bite. Um, and I'll I, I'll be the first to say I don't know if I know enough about a scrounger that I could use it. Mm-hmm. 12 months out of the year like that right um 
but I, it's one of those that if you, once you see a scrounger in the water, it's a no doubter. Like, you know, that bait works. There's no way that it can't. I know it's got some, um, awesome it's just, just great action. Um, it, it is a jackhammer good, without a jackhammer. Good vibration. Absolutely. Yeah. It was like the first time you remember the first time you ever threw a chatterbait. Yes. And you just, the rod lit up just that vibration. You're like, yeah, yeah. this is it. This, yeah. And that's what and, scrounger does. Um, yeah. Same. Like it's and, that and same effect. J- just a different way. Of, Smaller, just some more, much more compact pack. Absolutely. All right. Moving on, coming back down a little bit. We've got one, two, three, four, five left. We're getting into the bigger ones. Uh, but we got one more little small, medium size lake. Blue Ridge. Okay. I got a report on Blue Ridge. Bring right now, if you're going to Blue Ridge, you better be throwing a white fluke. Seems like a staple. Spot lake. Spot Herring, lake. Again, herring so, spawn. <laughs> so uh, a, a white fluke. I was not told whether, you know, um, how they were throwing it. I was not told how they hooked it. Just white fluke. And basically it was. You don't even need anything else. It's what wow. I told. Mm-hmm. That is, that's pretty confident in what they're that doing. That is very confident. Very confident. Don't even pull out another, uh, another rod. Throw a white There's, fluke all there, day long. There are all guys day. that just have game with a fluke, though. Like I catch mm-hmm. some fluke fish. I throw the fluke. Scrounger is a poor man's chatterbait. Sorry, there, I had to read that. <laughs> there, there are guys out there that it is just they got the gift with the fluke. Yeah, and it just seems like they whatever it is they got it figured out. But I had better luck, and this is just me. A lot of people love the white, but I actually caught more bass on a baby bass colored fluke. Throwing a baby bass color, okay. had the green and all that in it, and, and, and Latham back in the a day. Different look. It is a different look, but Latham back in the day, uh, when I was going to throw a fluke, if I wanted to catch big bass and I was just over there goofing off, I threw a baby bass colored fluke. And I didn't throw the little minis, I threw the big boys. Big boy. Through the big boys, and I had a lot of fun. You talking about watching the water boil? Yeah, but it was it a uh, zoom zoom fluke and baby bass. Yeah, well they so, don't they don't discriminate. No, they eat those things, don't they? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean there's what it what to, is it? to a six or an eight pounder a, a little ten inch bass that looks just as much of a meal as a shad or a bluegill. Absolutely. What's up, Jonathan Farmer? Glad you could join us, uh, Justin Warren. I got two on Hollis Q. On the jackhammer. The jackhammer. You know, the other day fish in the rock and dock at the golf course. Shh. Yeah. Well, that, listen, they'll do that. They they will do that. Um, hog farmer makes a badass scrounger. I like how he just basically said it right there. Uh, they do. Uh, pulse jigs makes a very good one too. I have fi- I have not fished hog farmers. I have fished pulse jigs uh, like that. So, all right. So now we're going to jump to our uh, biggest lake so far. Right here, we're gonna get back on the big lakes a little bit. One that we don't cover near enough, but we should. And 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 as some of the guests come in tonight, they'll be um, talking about this lake a little bit. Hartwell, okay. Um, got two two different scenarios, but again, the common theme is top water. Okay, top water. So if you are if you have a light wind, you throw in a spook. Got a little bit of heavy wind. Don't chug bug chug bug again we got the chug blue, bug blue chrome up. blue chrome um on a chug bug now again i i don't you know hartwell is a lake that's got large mouth and spots so uh interesting uh you you think that that works for both fish or are we looking more on the spot side with those i mean my gut is is spots i I don't know enough about Hartwell. I don't know. I am, I am, you guys at Fish I've been on Hartwell. Like, I've been on Hartwell a couple times. I've been I probably one it. one step short of helpless both times. Really? Yeah. I, I didn't sink. <laughs> you like, didn't sink. So, so that, I was, mean, a that plus. was yeah. That was a plus. That was a plus. So that, that um, that's awesome. So uh, Hartwell Hartwell strikes me a little bit like Lanier. Like I feel like the the spots there are times where they overlap right. And then kind of as the year wears on and spring is over, I feel like they kind of, the spots and the largemouth go their separate ways. Gotcha. Absolutely. Uh, Kai Tech and a, and a Wacky. Uh, Shock No One is talking. Let's see, where were we at? Shock No One's talking about a Whopper Plopper. Listen. Uh, well, I mean, listen, and I'm not discriminating. Nobody has said anything about a Whopper Plopper. Now, I would have expected it to come up on um, some of the smaller reservoirs. But uh, Whopper Plopper has not. Harwell has herring, but would work for largemouth and spots. Uh, Evergreen is good right now in chrome and bone. The SB, that's that's your shower blows right there. 
I got you right there. So that's Hartwell. So, but again, I, I would think too, Hartwell's like Lanier. I mean, you, it's, it's basically like yeah. 10 lakes in one. You can, it just depends on the, what part of the lake you're fishing on. Our, our source said if it slicks off and that top water dies, you want to go to a shaky head with just a, a natural classic colored worm, like a watermelon green or a kind of a bluegill or a, a herring. I got you. So I got this good comment from, uh, again, Mr. Pinkston. Uh, was it Hartwell? A couple of weeks ago for the BFL spinnerbait and shaky head. And again, now listen, so, you know, that, that's twice Steve's brought the, the, the spinnerbait. Spinner so that's, that's a, con that's a confidence bait in him. And I wanted to, and this is, this is just, and I'm not knocking Steve, Steve, you know, I love you. Uh, well, we're similar in age. I wonder too, if the spinnerbait is a quote unquote, a, old man, a, gen a generational, a generational thing. game. And the younger guys, have moved on to different things. Spinnerbait always works. It works. I mean, it just yeah. works. It, I mean, it, it works. works. And there's a reason why they make them and they sell them and they've been here forever. I'm, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not picking on you at all, Steve. I mean, that is a legitimate question because if I think if you go back tonight and you go up and you look at the list and if, if beside everybody's name uh, was an age, it would be interesting to see the correlation between the age of the person and what they're throwing and, and when that bait originated. You know, uh, we've heard jackhammer. In bass fishing terms, that's a relatively new bait. New bait. It's a new bait. Well, uh, a chatterbait is – a chatterbait's been around for a while now. It's been around for we're, a while, but uh, – We're probably 15 years into chatterbait already. We are, but in the, in the course of fishing history, that's still relatively young. Yeah. Compared to, you know – Yeah, but it's, uh, it's you not don't a Rapala, think, you, don't, you know – uh, Yeah. Or, or a, a know, long a bomber, long or a bomber, like, yeah. nothing like that. Uh, big blades work on Hartwell. No offense taken. Thank you, Steve. I, I, I knew it wouldn't be so. Uh, again, Eric Thurman. Uh, I grew up using spinner base and hard base, never learned plastics until last year. That might be a cool show to do. A good topic, uh, the generational use of uh, base like and just well, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll put that down. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna jump from Hartwell to Carter's. This one shocked me. All right, so this one shocked me. Because all I ever hear is people just griping about Carter's and how deep the lake is. All right. And I've talked to several people that have fished Carter's in the last uh, couple of weeks. And the person that I asked to today, uh, he gave me an answer that was, I've heard this answer several times over the, the past couple of weeks. Shaky head, specifically watermelon red and 15 foot or less. Now, the 15 foot or less is what got me. I can see the shaky head. How many places on Carter's Bill Payne are less throws than a shaky, 15 feet? Well, that's true. Bill Payne throws the shaky head. We all know Bill Payne can guide it and catch him out of 80 foot of water. But this guy specifically said 15 foot or less. And in fact, there was a tournament. Uh, there was a tournament on there, and it was one of the, it was a it was a club tournament a couple weeks ago that was one. Uh, but I know the second place team was in the store. And they caught all their fish in two to three foot of water that day and took second place really? at Carter's at Carter's, which was very interesting because Carter's is so deep, so deep. And, and so when I got that answer right there, uh, shaky head 15 foot or less right now, if you're going to Carter's now, again, like you said, I don't know where on Carter's that is. I, it's a <laughs> Maybe there's only a few spots. <laughs> Okay, so I didn't mean to give away somebody's, you know, but that's like, that's what the source told me. The, the, the juice of all juice there. The juice of all juice. It's like, now, two, it's like two spots on Carter. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Uh, jitterbugs. The jitterbug. Now, here's the thing, too. Uh, might be betting fish that deep at Carter. It might be, Ron. Absolutely. I don't know. Uh, now, the jitterbug is definitely an old man's bait. That is true, but it, it is absolutely right. The old school jitterbugs, especially at night, the jet black one. I remember throwing it at night and then you had the frog colored. Yeah. The blue, blue, blue. You know, they come so I think of the, when I think of the frog, I think of a hula popper, the frog color hula popper. Right. So those are all Arbor gassed or whatever. Is that who makes those things now? Did I throw something big? Isn't it Arbor gas that bought those? I think Arbor gas is the original, right? It might've been head and head in it. Might be, you might be absolutely right, but I have thrown a jitterbug and I tell you what, I never, when I grew up throwing a jitterbug, it was never on big lakes because I didn't fish big lakes. But I will tell you in a farm pond at night, 
If you want to get some of the most ferocious bites, Arbor Gas, there you go. If you want to get some of the most ferocious bites that you will ever get in your life, a, a black jitterbug will work pretty good at that. Yeah, they just try now, to take your arm off. They will. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to catch a million of them, but uh, definitely good. Even the steep banks have 10 to 15 foot of water. <laughs> That's right, Brian. Hey, listen, you're only a foot off the bank, okay? So you can be a foot off the bank at Carter's in 10 foot of water. All I've got to tell you is 15 foot or less. So definitely – definitely shallow. All right. So, uh, Justin speaks, you want to lose your arm, use it at night near pads. Absolutely. So that's what I'm saying. It's uh, and you know what? Now here again, we're talking about a bait. Is it just not as sexy to use a jitterbug? It, it has worked for decades. I think it's, I think it's what's going you're on. Double, you're doubling up with the jitterbug, right? It's yeah. not, it doesn't look sexy either. Y'all come on like in, people, jump on in. People like blades and skirts. What and, if you come over here and and, and either way, I'll, I don't, I'll I don't bounce, bounce over. You gonna bounce over? Yeah, I think. Yeah. Okay, Paul's gonna let bounce over. Let y'all have the side of honor here. Yeah, y'all can jump in. Yeah, yeah, get over here. So Andy Middleton is here, and, and Travis, and, and it's Dawkins. 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 I want to make sure because I, I did not want to uh, to mess it up. We're finishing up before you guys get to talking about your stuff. Um, I've been enjoying this. I've been watching. It's 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 an interesting thing. Yeah. So right now we're on Carter's, and so the report I got was fifteen foot or less watermelon red shaky head. And uh, of course, everybody's laughing at you know fifteen foot on Carter's. You better be hugging the bank. <laughs> and listen, the second place team seriously they were talking about throwing it right up on the bank. So we've been talking about that. We've been talking about the old school jitter, jitterbug. Do oh you yeah, throwing them things. In ponds, yeah. In ponds. And that's what yep. I'm saying. Some of the most ferocious bites I've ever got. It's a, it's a wake bait. It is. That's all it really yeah. is. But it's effective. And then yeah. the question just popped up. Is it just not sexy to be throwing it anymore? I mean, very serious. It's been a long time since I've caught a fish on one, but I wouldn't When's the last I time wouldn't you discount. One? I wouldn't discount throwing it. There was a river bassing tournament uh twenty sixteen, I believe it was, uh out of Chattanooga. I was in uh, North Chickamauga Creek, and I started out that morning throwing a jitterbait. I didn't get any bites on it. So. That was, that the, was last the last time, time I threw it. That yeah. was the last time? Okay. So it's been five years. Jitterbug is a finesse whopper plopper. That's Listen, I'm going to tell you this. Slowing down with a whopper plopper is a, a finesse torpe whopper plopper. A torpedo <laughs> is a finesse whopper plopper. The, the jitterbug has been around longer than I've been alive. Oh, yeah. So when the whopper plopper has yeah. been around that time, we'll, we'll – we'll, it may have the success as a jitterbug, but I would say if we were doing a top 15 to 20 baits of all time, you got to have a jitterbug. And we're talking all time. Jitterbug's got to be on the list. Don't you think for the longevity? Yeah, it's been around a, a popper, uh, a plastic worm, plastic lizard, spinnerbait. Yeah. It's up in, It's up there with the legendary lures. It's, got, it's got to be. It's I don't know if be. anybody's ever won a classic on one, but. Well, I don't, I don't know either. I, don't I either. think that's one though, like, you know a jitterbug when you see one, though. If someone held up and said, what is this bait? Yeah. A lot of bass fishermen, I'd say the majority probably are like, that's a jitterbug. Yeah. You, it, and whether or not you've ever thrown one, it's just gotcha. recognizable. Gotcha. I have a tackle box full of them at home that my grandpa gave me, but no, never thought to throw them. Thought they're, uh, oh, pull, pull your mic a little bit closer. These were, these are sensitive mics. Uh, gotcha. I think. Is that better, Josh? I get yeah. the. There we go. All yeah, right. I got a yeah, tackle yeah. box full of them. You know, Grandpa gave them to me, and just never thought to throw them. I thought they were uh, collectibles, and they are. Some of them are. They are if you get the right ones. All right. So we so we got two more lakes, two more lakes, and then uh, we will let Paul take over on this. We're we're back to Alatuna, and this one uh, of all the answers I got today, I found this one interesting. So this is why I, I decided to choose this one. Uh, Carolina rig, right now. Right now on Altoona, a Carolina rig, and specifically with a three foot leader and a softy green pumpkin red worm. Carolina rig on Altoona. What do you think about that? I've Carolina rigged on Altoona before with some success. Gotcha. Yeah. When I this first started, when I first started kayak fishing, um, and I was only taking a couple of rods out, one of them would usually have a spinner bait, and the other one would have a Carolina rig. And I started out. I lived in Holly Springs, so I, I would go to Altoona or right. uh, Hickory Lock. What do you think, Paul? You, you. I was speaking of of baits that have fallen out of favor or are seen as unsexy. I think Carolina rig is probably there. 
It just like, feels like I'm dragging dead ass weight though when I'm doing it'll it. Kid, I mean, I don't, it, it I don't, will care, but it's just like, get great. For right? anybody that don't have an electronics unit on their boat, the thing is indispensable though, because you feel every piece of cover down there. You throw it? I, I don't, but uh, I know my grandpa who fished uh, Altoona for you know sixty years. That's pretty much all he threw, um, and he won a lot of money on Altoona that way with the Carolina rig. Yep. Now what? Well, we're on Carolina rigs. What is constitutes too heavy of a weight? Because I think that's where a lot of people, including myself, make a mistake is that we think, I mean, you go in and you get these daggum big old egg sinkers that weigh, you know, three quarters, three quarters, egg, 2.2 ounces. You know what I thought about? They're like with surf surf stuff. Three quarters is my baseline. That's it. Yeah. That's the heaviest you go? No, that's my, that's my baseline. That's like where I start. Okay. Um, You know, if you got, if you got some grass or something and the and the three quarters is getting way down in it and it's too hard to drag through, then you might go up to a half or three eighths. And then if the wind's just making 90, then put a one ounce on. Gotcha. Gotcha. So Facebook user one ounce. Uh, absolutely. Carolina rig catches bigs when the fish are weight sensitive. Uh, I like to throw a split, yeah, split shot. And uh, Michael Temples, I did start Texas rigging a Cinco last week at Latham and did get some hooked up. All right, that's a question out there. What about a Tokyo rig? Any of you guys throw a Tokyo rig? Which at that point to me, you might as well be throwing a drop shot. <laughs> I caught my first fish on a Tokyo rig when I was practicing for Lake Lanier about a month ago. Um, I was wanting to throw a shaky head, but there's that that bottom grass is kind of slimy. Slime. Just yeah, just, slime just comes up at like three or four inches off the bottom. And I was getting my shaky head fouled up every cast. So I put... Uh, I just put a trick worm on a Tokyo rig and, and started getting a few bites on it. Do you, I mean, do you throw it? I don't. I've got some in my box. Um, I've heard you can punch with them. I heard they're pretty versatile and you can, you know, it's like a little mini drop shot. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And you I, sit I mean, there, shake it on the bottom. What about you, Paul? I don't even have one in the box. I don't have a Tokyo. <laughs> I don't. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I think, of the, I think of it more as a, a grass bait or something that you would throw in, in mats. Or, this might be sacrilege or whatever I'm saying, but it looks like one of them spinner baits that's got the ball on it. One of them Japanese-ass <laughs> ball spinner baits. You know what I'm talking about? The knuckle, <laughs> the knuckle bait. <laughs> I mean, listen, listen. The first time I saw that, I was like, seriously. If there ever was a bait made to try to catch fishermen and not and – not, I mean, have yeah. you ever thrown one of them? No, no. Have you? No. The, the, my brother the got one in a mystery blade. tackle box. Mystery tackle and sounds he, like something that would come in a mystery tackle box. He loves that thing. Are I you never, serious? Never caught a fish on it, but he loves the but way he it likes looks. to throw it. Yep, it comes through rocks good. I, I it <laughs> maybe it does because it is a rock. Uh, it, I mean, it's just the most unorthodox looking thing I have ever seen. I'm like, you know, I, now I imagine. Now he said coming through. They rocks. all look weird until they start catching fish, though. Yeah, <laughs> I throw a homemade one. Well, Casey Blanton, you're a great, you're a great American, so I figure you probably can, uh, and you can get away with it. But I looked at that thing, and half the writing's in Japanese, and I went, no, <laughs> not me. Yeah, I, but I, half the writing's in Japanese on yeah. a jackhammer too. Well, I don't, I don't buy jackhammers either. We we, we make ours, so <laughs> so there you go. But I, I, true. Now we did listen. Josh did. We got we got our first uh, first shipment of Kitex in up here at the store, and it was wrapped in Japanese newspaper. I mean, every bit of it. Now, here's another. Here's a trick for you guys, and this is just this is the Josh McCaig tip of the night. When opening up a box of fresh Kitex from the distributor, stay away. You want something that stinks? Stick a whole bunch of Kitex in one box. Like a bad Saturday night, man. Just, <laughs> that's got to be why they weren't so strong, good. Strong like a, squid descent. Like a bad Saturday <laughs> night. You don't want that. So Tokyo rig is good for swim baits on grassy bottoms. Okay, there you go. So I will say this. Josh pulled out the uh, drop shot, and uh, Black Shoals is pretty grassy, and he did well with it. Uh, just But he did every time he come up, he'd have 4.2 ounces of green grass or crap on there. That, just slime grass yeah. on the bottom of it. So, all right. So anyway, how you doing, Mac? And uh, Tokyo rig is awesome because it is so versatile, just like Travis said. Punch it, drag it, pitch it. It's a game changer. Another co-angler friend. Mm-hmm. Now, that's I a different perspective. So, they, so there you go. So that's, that is a different perspective coming from yeah. the co-angler side that I, I can see that. So uh, interesting. All right. So now we're going to get to the mother load lake. 
I've been I've been holding on to Lanier last because I'm sure there's somebody out there that's got a tournament on Lanier this weekend, and they're wanting to hear what to throw. Uh, Brian Andrews, I'll just stick to my horny toad. He is the horny toad throwing his person. I know, but he has great success. But here is what I was told right now. The one bait to be throwing on Lake Lanier is a white swim jig with a Yamo swim sink. Uh, Cinco trailer. So a white swim jig with a Yamo Cinco swim, whatever swim Cinco trailers, right yeah. now. So I imagine they're going after Shad Spawn and stuff yeah. like that. Shad Spawn and, and maybe Spawn. largemouth in the uh, in the buck brush and the, the yeah. dog funnel. Yeah, so that's like that. And then uh, close second though was a uh, Sabil. Mm, right, it's now, that so time. <laughs> it's that time. So late Lanier, Derek White. Yes, that is late Lanier. That is just what hard to disagree with. That. It's well, very only, hard. Only if you got the old Seville, though. The new ones don't work right here. And why is that? Why is that? I see that. Listen, everybody says the old ones swim better. It's probably better QC. Or, uh, the new pencil bait from Captain Mac is fire. Hey, absolutely. I'm sure it is. There you go. Throwing it. Uh, so definitely. Uh, but that was the that was the lakes, you know. And I, and I thought it was interesting. I just I put out the guys that I knew would tell me. Uh, that wouldn't give me any BS as far as, you know, I, I trusted the sources. Uh, and I would say uh, swim jig right now, chug bug, um, and a shaky head. Right now, as you're pretty, I mean, that's pretty much across the state of Georgia. But uh, swim jig had a lot of, a uh, lot more answers than I expected. Uh, so any, any of you guys swim jig aficionados, you like throwing a swim jig? Oh, yeah. You'll, you'll, hear, you'll about hear about that, that on uh, Hartwell. There you go. So that, that's there a little bit of some of the stuff. So, <laughs> uh, Heron Spawn about overfish are moving out. Hey, uh, Lanier, BSU. <laughs> well, listen, I, I I don't know about that. I, I, the guy that uh, the guy that told me, I, I trust <laughs> pretty good. Blue keep fish but not catching them. Yeah, that's the king bait of all short strikes. <laughs> <Ain't it like, laughs> seriously, definitely. Uh, I'm told the old Sabil swim tighter and are more stable at high speeds. Hey, absolutely. That might be it. So, all right. So what we're going to do now is uh, it's going to be a good time to transition. And I'm getting ready to let Mr. Paul take over the show uh, as we get into the next uh, the next part with our guests, Travis and Andy. But before that, we have got the uh, the Stump Paul segment. All right. And before we get to the Stump Paul segment, again, I want to uh, talk to you guys a lot of you guys are like me. You're busy. You got a wife at home. She's, and I hope my wife's not watching, but Lord knows she's pounded me with that list. You got to get this done. You got to get this done. You got to get this done. Honey, I ain't got time. I got a show tonight. I got a fishing tournament on Saturday. Uh, just got stuff to do. Well, <laughs> let me tell you something. Mr. Charlie Buchanan right here in Marble Hill, Georgia, and he's willing to travel in this great area. He's the guy. If you got a list that you want to get stuff done, you need to give him a call at 770-337-0478. Uh, all types of general construction. In fact, Charlie, if you're watching tonight, uh, Josh and I were upstairs. We actually got a job we'd like for you to uh, look at here at the shop upstairs. So, uh, again, just showing you that we trust him enough that uh, we'll let him do work here. So we're not he's not just somebody we're throwing a name out there. Charlie's a great guy. In fact, he comes up here, and, and I enjoy my talks with him uh, when he gets a chance. But, again, Charlie Buchanan, 770-337-0478. Quality work, great prices, nothing too big, nothing too small. So uh, definitely, you guys, think about Charlie. If you've got a list, uh, give him a call. Tell him the guys at Fish North Georgia sent you. You, won't, uh, you will not be disappointed. So Stump Paul here. All right, here's the question. Now, I went ahead and I selected this because I thought it would be a mess trying to do it out of a hat. So of all the questions I got, I thought this one – uh, caught my uh, eye, and uh, he ain't gonna get it. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, you're gonna win if he gets this. He he is he is far oh, better man. prepared than I thought he would. But it's an interesting question. So here we go. Limber up here. Limber up. And, and Limber then, up. in fact, you know what? Anybody here is, is if you can answer this question, y'all can throw it out there. All right. And if anybody but Paul answers it, I'll I'll give you the. Cofield Customs, but Rick Klein, 1973. <laughs> <laughs> no, all right, Jerry McKinnis. No, here we go. Listen, this, this is actually pretty interesting. Due to a misprint from an interview given by George W. Perry, the world record largemouth bass was once thought to have been caught on what lure? Now, that's a tough question. 
Mm. Hell, I don't even know what the real lure was, it, what it was called. Do you know what the world record bass was caught on? Does anybody? I'm going to guess a plug, but I don't know. Hell, I'd have thought live bait back in the uh, back, so I don't know. But anyway, due to a misprint, um, due to a misprint from an interview given by the record holder, George W. Perry, the world record largemouth bass was once thought to have been caught on what lure? And this fella even gave the color. Kurt's got it, I think. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, you I'm, 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 I'm real interested in the, the Chase Epley board right now, then, because I don't want to. I'm going to tell you right now, it wasn't a spinnerbait. <laughs> it, was it a jackhammer? Right, yeah. <laughs> got, Def, any, got any idea? Definitely not a whopper plopper. Nope. South Georgia. I think we've stumped you. That's Mon Mon Which this would have stumped Montgomery me Lake. Yeah. I need, I need some Jeopardy music. An oxbow. Nice little, yeah. Yeah. A little oxbow. It's the... Are we going to get sued for that? If no. I do, I don't if, you go, if you go too long, yeah. Okay. YouTube, well, you, will, YouTube you got, will crack you got, down on you. I need an answer. Um, It's the something or other. I see it again. Perch or something like that. Okay. It's, it's got some kind of... Yeah fish name but i i can't remember well i won't tell you this so i won't go ahead and give the, the give the answer and i'm gonna give the 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 baits too but here's the here's the answer creek chub wiggle fish in perch color there we go creek chug wiggle fish in perch the old color creek chub. now here, here's the thing so that was the wrong answer so that's not that's what he that's what i uh, was uh once thought that he had caught the the lure on so Tyler Minix actually, yeah, there we go. So the actual really is was a fintail shiner. Okay, so that made more so sense. So live bait. Live bait caught it. Live bait caught it, but it was once thought to have been caught on a creek chub wiggle fish in perch color. No, no, no the, the the fintail shiner is another bait that creek chub, creek chub made. Oh, okay. Apparently. Well, there you go. I thought it was live bait. So there we yeah. go. All right. So anyway, interesting. Tyler Minix, you have taught us something. Uh, tell us several things tonight. So the actual thing was a fintail uh, shiner made by Creek Chub, but it was reported yeah, incorrectly as a wiggle fish in perch color. Listen, I wouldn't have been no way in hell I'd guess that, but all right. I have to start doing my homework. So what we're going to do is uh, each week we're going to start doing this. We're going to stump Paul. I think it's going to be an easy way to give out a lot of baits, but I think he's going to start studying. Some fishing history again. So have your questions ready. I'll put for, that Rick Clone seventy three thing Clone in my pocket. Yeah, I'll need that's that at right. some point. Yeah, a little you can't Easter egg for you there. You can't go wrong with Rick, Rick Clone seventy three. Now, uh, again, so next week, <laughs> that or Bill Dance. Bill Dance is you know he's one answers for everything. George Cochran. That's right. So what we're going to do uh, starting next week? Anytime we have an episode and, and Paul's on it, we're going to try to stump Paul <laughs> because he he is very very smart and. Um, I think it'd be, I think it'd be pretty cool though. So again, even if you don't get it right, we're learning something. And so tonight we learned that. So I think, well, that's an important fish, right? Like we get it's to a very important fish. I mean, we still get to claim that fish. That's right. We will always claim that. We fish. will always claim always that claim that fish. So, all right, now, all you kayak guys, we're gonna, we, we're going to definitely uh, start motoring. I shouldn't say motoring. I guess I can say motoring. You can on, you can on some, some series. I can. I can say motoring <laughs> a little bit. Into, Not uh, ours. Into the uh, <laughs> discussion. Uh, both of these guys uh, fished the Hobie BOS. Uh, are we throwing shade? Right. Oh, no, no. Oh, oh, okay. I think that could be, there could be some spicy takes there. Spicy takes there. Okay. You could, so. you could ask your favorite question. I'll start off this by asking that, and then after that, I'm going to let you take over. All right. Okay. So, um, but anyway, both of you fished the, the Hobie uh, Bass Open on Hartwell. Both of you had excellent finishes i think i i, I said it wrong is it 14th and 15th or third yeah correct say? i think it was 14th 15th yeah and our buddy shellnut got a 13th yeah charles shellnut who was on here he was yeah. 13th all right so okay, we're all, on shellnut yeah we we're all in the same house stay in the same house yeah, yeah. Our, our, house, time, so. our house was you know i think over we half very of us were in the money house. after eight, yeah. day one and had a pretty uh, okay, good okay so i got two, two questions and i'm gonna turn it over to paul first question number one when you got all you guys all you guys are in the same house. Are you being really coy? I mean, seriously, are you being coy or are you just saying, hey, you know, guys, I'm catching them on this? Yeah, we'll share info. Okay. Love we that. don't we don't share like juice, like a certain spot or anything, but 
he's telling me he's catching them on a swim jig and I don't even have one tied on and I didn't tie one on the whole weekend. I caught mine on a shaky head. So we were fishing completely different areas of the lake, completely different patterns. Gotcha. Okay. All right. And my last question before I let Paul take over the show, at what point, and you've heard this question, but at what point does a kayak become a boat? <laughs> and you what, put a motor on it. You've heard, you've heard my answer. That's, I mean, that's one take on it. Uh, Mine is uh, when it's not plastic, when it becomes fiberglass or aluminum. So um, as long as it's plastic, it's kind well, of... Well, uh, and, and there's a certain shape, you know. Uh, you know, the kayak comes from, from the, the natives, the Eskimos, uh, who use those to fish out of and, and travel from place to place. Right. And there's a certain shape. It's that kind of elongated football-type shape. Uh, as long as it's that, that general shape and, and not like one of those pelican bass raiders or something you know it's it's a it's I, kayak okay I take that you. pelican take that pelican okay that's <laughs> or just, anything else like uh, a bass raider i don't have to be a pelican i got really. you i got you so like, like a paddle or like boat a like, bow like, like a paddle, paddle pom, boat from, from, from or a paddle boat or local or whatever, yeah. amusement I got park you, got you. Yeah. i got you all right no so, swan boat a what no swan boat no swan boat <laughs> i mean it's the general shape but no, i don't think not one, one of the water bikes with the big don't need to have a head and wings on it <laughs> right right uh art hobie's fiberglass uh no no okay I, yeah so I, there's, there's a question i don't know so they are heavy and this <laughs> heavy, and, listen, and, and this, this <laughs> what about carbon fiber there's these new 15 pound boats that's right. There, uh, Eric Jackson uh, came out with a carbon fiber kayak last year that cost ten thousand dollars. So, I mean, I guess it, I guess it falls into the category of the right shape for the kayak, but it's not a plastic boat. Well, like uh, touring, touring kayaks have been carbon fiber for a long time. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was like, I talked to a guy at Latham on Sunday who's loading up one that was like sixteen feet. He's like, oh yeah, this one's real heavy. It weighs like thirty five pounds. That's awesome. I would I would <laughs> die if my kayak weighed 35 pounds. That would be great. All right. Yeah, yeah I was about to say get, we got batteries. Like you know, a six volt battery weighs more than that or whatever. So yeah, right. yeah it's oh. like, like the uh, government's definition of inappropriate content. You know it when you see it. Yep. <laughs> That's a good answer. Yep. That's a lot of trails, I like that. They they got rules that say if it's marketed as a kayak or a canoe, then then you can use it. But if it's marketed to put a gas motor on it, then then you can't use it. All right. Where do where do you fall with like new canoe then? Do you put a little baby outboard on a new canoe? You can, you can. Uh, you know, it looks like a kayak to me. Um, I, I've I've started off where there's I, a lot I was, of good. I was no motor. I, did, yeah, I didn't want motors, things. but now I've kind of I've done a few KBF events, and I'm like, okay, this is pretty cool. Right. You know. Well, so I just always you know being being a boat guy myself, and and, and again no disrespect to the to the kayak guys and i just always like to ask that question because yeah. i've seen some kayaks that are just absolutely amazing to look yeah. at but you can stick three people on them and they can all a cooler and and you yeah. know and a, and a mini bar in a in a in a stove or whatever and, and, yeah. and then they go fish kayak tournament i'm like yeah so anyway so paul wish, wish i could I'll, I'll, throw, I'll throw shade at a motor every now and then but i'm really not i'm really not that, right that against them right gotcha, gotcha. Just just super to, super just cool guy justin uh, take a second to talk to him sometime he's he was really nice all right so so again kayak is not my forte i don't know and i would ask some really terrible questions i'm gonna sit back and i'm gonna listen to paul take over I'm, the show i'm gonna ask bad questions too don't yeah worry. but i get this is the part where <laughs> i, I get some to bad sit answers. back and i get all right questions. so uh <laughs> guys you guys enjoy it I'm, I'm gonna step back there with uh Hey. With Josh and it's it's all on you. you hey, congrats! Hit the couch. I'm gonna hit the couch. Hey, I want to congratulate Paul on his finish at Lanier in the Peach State tournament. Thank you. There you go. Yeah, he kicked their ass. Did he really? <laughs> yeah, he did. Paul, Paul can fish. That's why he's I'm, on here. I pushed the right button for once instead of self destructing. <laughs> instead of self destructing. <laughs> Have some fun with Paul. That's my usual move. Um, thank you, man. That means a lot. Yeah. Um, so I was gonna say, let's kind of begin at the beginning. Um, cause there are a million kayak trails out there right now. I think any given weekend you could go fish any one of, of three or four, um, and just kind of put in context where BOS is kind of in the pecking order of, of kayak events. Hello, Andy. You want me to take you that? Me to take Hello, that? Andy, you, you got all the, all the connections there. I think you'd well, be better I'm, to. I'm team Hobie, but I mean, I, I, even even if I wasn't before I was team Obi, I was on another kayak team and, and I I would put the BOS at the top of the pecking order, if nothing else, because they have their tournament of champions 
at the end of the season, it's the toughest championship tournament to get into. There's only 50 people in it, and uh, it's a pretty big purse. Uh, I think it was twenty-five or $35,000 for first last year. Uh, and that field size, that's that's a really, really great uh, first place prize. Oh. Um, they take uh, three people out of each of their trail events. Top three gets into it, and then – after that, uh, so if they they have nine trail events, so you get twenty seven guys or gals out of out of that, and then uh, they'll uh, the next twenty three or that your top twenty three in AOI points if if they've not qualified already through a tournament through a tournament. Okay, so it's you would say then all yeah the the, the qualification is just it's the hardest and um, you know for me I like the no motor aspect so you've got to be <clears throat> somewhat in shape. Um, you know, especially if you're paddling and, um, you know, if you watch his video this past weekend where he's giving an update, you know, he's, he's sweating puffing and puffing. He's, yeah. he's making a one, 1.2 mile run to his next spot. And he's like, man, I got a coal. I, I thought that was awesome. Um, so the physical aspect of it, and, and then the fact that the qualifications are, it's so hard to qualify for the tournament of champions. Um, and it's just a very well run tournament, uh, organization. Yeah, everything's done really angler centric. Um, before COVID, uh, you would have a get together on Friday night. They would feed you. Um, okay. And all all this stuff. They're so it's very, kind of you had the kind of the get together. You get everybody in the same yeah, place. Yeah, yeah. You get the camaraderie and everything. And they and it's like they it's like they think of everything. Like when you get your tournament identifiers, you'll have your identifier on one side with your code for the day, and then on the back of the identifier, it's got all the times you need to know your lines mm -hmm. in time, your lines out time, your submission yep. time. So it's got that quick reference on the back of it, and it's just little stuff like that that kind of goes a long way in in reflecting how much they they put the English. Yeah, it's really polished. Um, and I guess the, the, the next, uh, I guess the next one would be BASS. And, and if nothing else for that, just the, uh, just the name recognition. The exposure. Um, they, their tournaments are well ran as well. well this um, is never, never had a BASS is first or second, first or second season, second season. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I've not fished one yet this year. It didn't quite work out with my schedule. And then, and when the Hobie schedule came out at the beginning of the year, uh, I just kind of was like, man, this this schedule, this is like the best kayak yep. tournament schedule I've ever seen. They had, did they have a Ufala as well? Bass had or, Ufala May 1st. I fished Ufala. Okay. Yeah. How'd you do? I skunked. <laughs> <laughs> Good event, though? I mean. Yeah, I thought it was well ran. Yep. Um, you know, I, I'd like to see him go to a two-day format, but but for what it is right now, yeah. I, thought, I thought it was great. And the fact nice. that you can qualify for something – in in um, with the Bassmaster Classic next year and and fish in con in conjunction with that that's awesome. So they, for both of you guys, then you would say that kind of the the level of competition is what draws you to to BOS. It's just kind of yeah best best run best competition, right? Um, and and then um, now do they do they run? Is it like regional circuits that feed a championship? Is there a, like a southeastern, or are they all over the country? complete national trail? Okay, yeah. Uh, um, and you can in bass, you can get in through some bass nation stuff, like through states. But with Hobie, it's just the national trail. They'll have they have nine events, but they space them out all over the country, and you get to take you you just take your best three. So okay. you know you can. Any anybody kind of in any make, particular make it work with your schedule? Yeah, list, anybody so in any particular area for the most part can can pick out three to fish and and just kind of jackpot those three if they, you yeah. know, if they really want to bet on themselves to how many get good you, How many points. have you done so far this year? I've done three already. Already? Yeah. What what lakes? I did Seminole, Watts Bar, and Hartwell. All right. How'd you do? Uh, Seminole, I got 40, 43rd out of about two hundred. Um. Watts Not, Bar, Watts Bar, I got forty fifth out of ninety five, uh, so middle of the pack yeah. with one fish <laughs> the whole weekend. Well, Watts Bar was, I remember seeing it was really it was, it was nineteen cold degrees. And Both days was and, nineteen yeah. degrees in, in the morning, and, and the bite was just just about impossible. Even yeah. even Ryan Lambert, the guy that won it, he said it was just just a miserable bite that yeah. weekend, miserable weekend <laughs> to be out fishing. But he he managed to find a grass patch with ten fish. And just it. happened to have fish. Yeah. Um, oh, we got a comment. I'd love to see a no motor, no pedal league started. 
would make for an interesting run for some guys. <laughs> no motor, no pedal. Well, I would like that because I don't have a pedal kayak, and I'm all paddle. You're still paddling? <laughs> I give, am. Give me some. I am. <laughs> give me some. I was until so, the year before last. What about you, Travis? Are you are you trying to fish three and, and go far? Or? Well, seeing as how I did pretty good in the first one, um, I'd, I'd have to have – some conversations with my wife and uh you know beg and plead so was, and Harwell was your first then it was it was i did one last year i did the kusa last year um and i was eighth after day one i roomed with andy again that time that was real fun and uh i screwed up on day two and and fell to i think number 30 or something but um i, I just thought that was when i was like wow hobie they know how to run a tournament yeah um but I, I think we we at least got to mention KBF. I think oh, you know they were it. they were around for you know a long time before these other trails um, started coming up, and um, I think they do a good job too. And um, you know they're the reason why these other trails yeah, are here. And, they they were the pioneer, and now they've kind of this year it seems like more so than last year they've really settled into their niche and they're getting really good attendance at their events this year. Mm -hmm. um, I guess. I guess if you want to compare it to the bass boat world, KBF is, I guess, sort of like the BFLs or the coast is okay. in, in the kayak world. And then Hobie and Bass are kind of like Bass and MLF, I guess. Yeah. And they still have probably, I would call it a, I wouldn't call it a national championship. Um, I would call it more like they have the biggest open event. Uh, the qualifications are a little bit easier than Hobie's yeah. and, uh, but the prizes are pretty great. I mean, uh, they still get some of the, the best sponsorship dollars it looks like so. yeah they that the kbf national championship hoover chad hoover who, who runs runs kbf is you know he, he it's self-admitted it's a it's more of a spectacle than it is really an elite event yeah but you get elite money for winning it so. it's pretty dang hard to win yeah. that event and it's yeah. a three-day event yeah. so How many boats? Yeah, Very, hundreds, hundreds. Um, you know, last year crazy. was three, three hundred and something, but fifty ish. There's been seven, yeah, we had seven fifty on Kentucky Lake, and I think it was not to 18 or 19. That's wild. Yeah. And I do love the fact that they cut <laughs> now, it to 100, cut? yeah, I was which about is to, great. I, I love say. that. Uh, well, I mean, with 750 fish in three days, that's yeah. just insanity if you don't cut that number down, yeah. Um, Fish finder or no? I think that's going to be a yes from everybody. Yes. Absolutely. Even with a just a paddle, yes. Um, what's the most important part of it? For uh, for me, I, I think as it far was, as the fish finder. Yeah, for me, I think it was GPS. Like I, being able to go back to an exact mm -hmm. spot was really important. Yeah, it's yep. most mostly GPS for me, and uh, just I guess with two D knowing how deep you are. Yeah, but. The GPS is really important to me because I like fishing points and stuff. I just I'll, I'll get out I'll get out and fish structure whether I know if there's fish on it or not. Yeah, it's a hump or a point or something like that. I'll I'll go out and cast and drag something over it just, just to, to just to see just to see because some of those some of those fish you know that 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 are hugging the bottom you won't be able to see them on your graph anyway. So if you're dragging something on the bottom, there's a fish there. Just drag it over that point or drag it over that hump. They might eat it. All right. Yeah, GPS and, and 2D is is awesome, especially on Lanier. Um, we get out there in the summer. I, I feel like some of those spooky fish, uh, you yeah. come up and roll up in a kayak, it might be a little better than rolling up in your boat with that trolling motor. They get used to hearing the boats, I think. The they kayaks? Just, yeah, or the bass on the oh, yeah, yeah. Like, they just Those fish get pounded. It's – oh, Lanier. <laughs> yeah, at some point they don't – I don't think they – I don't think it even matters to them anymore. Yeah. They Do you think so they get many. numb to it a little bit? I think they probably get numb to it. I, I think uh, the, the area I was in on Hartwell, he was in a secluded area, but in some backwater, but the area I was in on Hartwell uh, last weekend was just as bad as anything I've seen on Lanier. Really? Yeah. I mean, it was, it was, a that's bad. It was a washing machine. <laughs> that's Absolute bad. Washing machine. What kind of electronics so, do y'all have in your kayaks? Go ahead, drive. Uh, I got a Helix 7 uh, with the side imaging, which was a mistake because it doesn't work that well when you're paddling. I have a Helix 7 with the side imaging as well, second generation. I'm a Helix 5 right now. I'll probably be a, a 7 or an 8 next season. Um, a little extra screen would be nice. Yep, I've heard the <laughs> 9 is what you need really for a, for side imaging to work really well. well I think it's the... I'll go LJ for a second. I think the 8 has the like highest pixel density 
per inch. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and LJ is kind of a local legend on Lanier. Uh, Jim Harmon, he's a, a hummingbird a guy hummingbird, through, yeah, yeah. through and through. And that is that is his big his big catch is always pixel density. You want like most pixels on on the smallest screen to like get that extra little bit of definition. I yeah, think, I think the imag- eight, there's a change there. Side imaging, I mainly use it to find cover, like a brush pile or something. Um, you have to know kind of exactly what you're looking for. If you watch Fish the Moment, you know, there's some good videos on there about how to pick out fish on side imaging. But if it's on a small screen, like seven or something like that, you're looking for grains of Just rice a on, little, a, on a sm- yeah. very, very small screen. So it's it's better for me uh, just to just to use it for brush. Basically. Better than Garmin, you know. I've never really used Garmin. A lot of people really like them. Um, they've come on super strong. I think everybody knows a guy that has Panoptics right now. Yeah. Um, which is super cool, uh, especially on the if on the big boat side, it's super cool. I saw some people I've, with it on, on the kayaks. The, I've seen a few <laughs> setups on the kayaks. Yeah. Um, Garmin's Garmin's come on. There, I mean, there's no doubt about it. And the L words, they're all pretty good, Michael. I would, I would say. Yeah, there's nothing, there's it, nothing wrong really with any. Of I, them. I, I think Gar, Garmin's got the, got the, or well, Lawrence has the live imaging now too. But yeah. Garmin had the the market corner for so long with that Panoptics, yeah. and uh, now you're on the verge of seeing Hummingbird come out with their version of it, and I'm I'm curious to see how it and what that looks what like. It looks like, yeah. I think I'll I'll go there and I'll say that I think that your electronics are a lot like your. I'm are, running the boat. I'm running the show back here. They're a lot. Like, we got Danny pushing buttons. Look out now. <laughs> I, I'd say your electronics have have kind of gotten to the point. They're a lot like a lure, or like a rod, or whatever. You go with what you're confident in. Go with what you're. You know that you're confident. What you're seeing is what's down there. Yeah. Um. I think that's kind of probably more important than the sticker on the side of the box. I agree. So, um, yeah, kinda, there's no good if you can know what you're looking at. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not confident in what you're seeing, like, yeah. it's, and it took what, a while. It that, that took a while. And that for takes, me. It's like, I grew up using a flasher and I knew when I was seeing fish or brush on a flasher for years and years. And then, uh, you know, take a break from fishing for a while, get back into bass fishing, doing these kayak tournaments and, and get a helix. And, uh, you know, there's still a learning curve, even though it's the, the technology is so far above and advanced what it used to be. You still have to get confidence in what you're looking at. Is that blob you're lo- is that blob I'm looking at on my screen of fish? Well, let's drop a bait down to it and see if it moves. Yeah. So uh, to that, we'll, we'll kind of dive back into Hartwell because we've kind of underserved Hartwell as a as a lake here. Um, I like it. <laughs> You like it, <laughs> yeah. I guess you, yeah. but you both would like yeah. it. From what we saw, uh, um, it kicked out some good strings. Oh, and you didn't even mm-hmm. see the big ones. There's a there's a 24 and a half caught in practice. Uh, yeah. it, was a 25 caught in in the tournament? I was not aware there was a 25. I didn't see two 24s in. I did see the uh, uh, 24 and a half caught during practice. Jeez, I mean, Sorry, it, 24 and a half. Uh, for you weight guys, 24 and a half is what? Probably seven, like eight, push, seven like pushing eight. Pounder. Yeah. 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 And pre-spawn, I mean. That's a serious knows, fish. If it was pre-spawn, it might if have been it was, nine. If it had been pre-spawn, it, yeah, it would have it would have pushed nine, nine and a half. That, that fish was huge anyway. So Hartwell is, I'd like to say, I think it's the core's biggest lake in the southeast. Um, it's giant. Or- yeah, I, I, can't, I can't pull the number off my head. I used to know it. Like the acreage. <laughs> Um, kayak game a little bit different than the boat game, yeah. but at the same time, we tell guys about Lanier, don't try to attack all 38,000 acres of Lanier. You drive yourself yeah. insane. Mm-hmm. So with the kayak, obviously you have some limitations for your range. What is y'all's thought process when you start to attack a new lake and especially a big lake where you can't go everywhere? And Travis, go go ahead. We'll start right. with you. I'll start. Um, well, I, I started off river bassing with uh, on Drew Gregory series. So for me, I'm I'm pulling up Google Earth. I'm looking at every creek, every river arm. I'm trying to find um, where I think I can go catch a, a quick limit in, in a creek somewhere. Um, and I'll look at the water clarity of the main lake, and I'll look at the water clarity of several different creeks driving over them. 
uh, that's pretty much all practice is, is not a whole lot of fishing because you could, you could pick a bad area and fish the whole, you know, your whole one practice day in one area, catch a couple fish and not know what the deal is. So, um, that's what, that's what we did. I, uh, I was talking to Andy coming up. Uh, I think I came Thursday night and we had Friday to, to practice and, uh, I hit a couple of areas caught a few fish, sent him some pictures like, Hey, I'm catching one on a swim jig in dirty water. Um, you know, of course I'm in backwaters and, uh, and then, you know, spur of the moment, we, uh, Andy mentioned this Creek and, um, we were like, Hey, let's go check it out. Let's see what happens. Yeah. I, I, that Friday that he was talking about, I was down on the main lake and, um, uh, I was throwing some top water and, and basically graphing brush piles offshore. Um, so I had a pretty good idea of what it, what I wanted to do unless I went back in this creek that he was talking about and we found the mother load back there. Um, it's kind of I'm I'm kind of with Travis's school of thought because I like I like fishing current I like fishing rivers and creeks as well and I'll I'll look at those type of places and if I see one that I think looks right I'll go fish it to see if it's if, gonna it be, is right. if it's going to be viable for 10 fish over two days in this case in a, in a hobie tournament um but uh anyway i found a decent pattern out on the main lake so uh, about 12 or 1 that day i i like like travis said we were on the phone i said yeah let's let's go to this creek you know i, I looked at it yesterday and it looks pretty awesome so uh we went out there and, and Travis immediately started catching fish in this Creek and, uh, I couldn't buy a bite. And I got like two thumps in there and that was it. And, uh, <laughs> we got, we, we took out at the, we had to be out off the water at four o'clock that day. And I said, Travis, this is all you, man. I said, you, you came in here and caught fish and got bites. And I think this is a good Lord's way of telling me that I need to go to the main <laughs> lake, even though I love Creek fishing. Yeah. So, and um, I might've been more apt to go to the main lake if I had a Hobie and, and, uh, you know, I had confidence in finding brush piles. Cause I, I love doing that kind of fishing on Lanier. I've got a, I've got an express H 22 yeah. that I, that I just got. I don't know how to use it yet. You know, I'm out there. So is Lanier home for you? Uh, you know, I'm five minutes from Altoona. So, um, I've been out on, on Altoona a few times, caught some, caught some spotted bass, but I love Lanier. Those spotted bass are so fun. The big ones are. Yeah. yeah. And then Andy, what's, what's home for you? Um, I grew up fishing like wise, uh, for crappy, uh, pretty much every weekend I had free. Uh, so that, that Coosa river, uh, any, anything Coosa river, I would consider pretty much home. Uh, the closest thing to me now is the, the upper Etowah. So, I mean, that's, that's my, that's my home kind river. Kind and of then, stomping grounds. Yeah. That's kind of my stomping grounds. And then, um, uh, you know, I'll fish altitude every now and then, but, and, and then my parents lived on chick for about five or six years. So I was fishing chick. You got a good, a good piece too. of that. Yeah. How do you like chick? Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, so then I know when I go to a tournament, I, I look for somewhere that reminds me of home a little bit. Yeah. You, you want, you want home cooking, right? You want comfort food. Mm -hmm. Um, is that the same for y'all? Is that kind of your first impulse is to, I'm, I'm going to look for something that lets me do things the way that I like to do them. I, I think that's the in a tournament like like Hobie like when you don't when you don't have a week to practice that's what you got to do like for me that that's finding shallow water if I can find bass in shallow water that are that are eaten that don't have ten cars on them because that's that's the deal with uh, these kayak tournaments is it, my first backwater like I found a week before in my boat and you know it's legal to come a week before in your boat um, as long as it's not you know official practice time and uh i went in there and caught three big large mouth or like 16 17 inch large mouth and bread i was and, like bread and butter fish good that's a pretty fish. bread and butter fish pretty good but there are seven cars there and you can't fit your boat under this bridge it's a great backwater but there's seven kayaks in there and you know you see some guys that regularly place and you're like man i don't think there's enough fish in here for seven kayaks for two days um so that's when I was like, let's go check that Creek out. Or Andy said, let's go check it out. You know, go in there first cast, catch a 20 inch spot. And I'm like, okay, that's telling me something right there. Get your attention. <laughs> yeah. That'll get your attention quick. 20. Um, with, with me, it's not necessarily looking for something like home. Um, 
if I'm if I think I'm going to fish main lake type stuff or or even even creeks and bays off the main lake. I'm going to look for something with a really diverse set of cover and structure. Um, I'm going to want channel swing banks. I'm going to want riprap. I'm going to want docks. I'm going to want all, all these different types on grass. Like I want all these different types of things that I can go hit, you know, within a fairly reasonable amount of time. That way, if something doesn't work out, I've got all these other different things I can check. And then let's say I find them on docks then i or find them on certain transition bank or something like that i can go try to look at all the places in within reasonable distance of this area and, and try to repeat the pattern so that's that's always uh, to me i paddle too i don't have paddles. yeah what's reasonable distance like what do you i mean even like even pad paddling or pedaling either one i i want to be within like a mile and a half or so of a bunch of different stuff because i don't even pedaling i mean i I can pedal three miles, no problem, but like, I don't want to, like, I want to be casting. Yeah. And so I was, I think that was the first thing, even is fishing local stuff, right? Your time yeah. management. Yeah. Like immediately sticks out as just being very important. Yes. Yeah. And I like his strategy because, you know, especially on Hartwell, things are changing like daily. So uh, you, you could see it in, in the changes in the leaderboard and, and yeah. the updates that the AJ was given. So, um, and you could see it, the weather was changing, the wind was changing. So now was that event Friday, Saturday or Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, Saturday Sunday. Sunday. Okay. So you didn't even get the difference between weekday weekend. Oh, uh, I practiced on, I practiced on like Thursday afternoon and then all day Friday. Big difference. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Especially on the, yeah, that main lake, like even on a Friday, it wasn't that bad because I was out there from sunrise to about one o'clock on Friday and it was a world of difference come Saturday. You wouldn't have known there was a gas shortage. If there's a gas shortage, everybody used all their gas on Saturday. On their boat. Yeah. Let's see. Um, to that. Um, yeah. Let's go with Michael's question. What kind of things are you looking for? Like two waters meeting color cover temp water speed. Wow. So what I guess what's what's the juice combination? For that you? sounds like he's like, asking a question about the the water's meeting and the water speed. He's, he sounds like he's asking about an area with current in it. Yeah, with current. For me, I was looking for dirtier water because uh, I like to throw moving baits, uh, chatter baits. Usually, what I like to throw is my search bait, and I was looking for a dirty creek. Um, with fishing that I could get to react to, to that chatterbait and it just was not working. So that's when I switched to the swim jig and um, started getting bites on it. How do you, yeah. how do you rig your swim jig? Oh, I just, I, I got a, a, it's a dirty jig swim jig. Um, I got a Kai tech 4.3 on the back straight out of tactical. Yep. <laughs> T tactical I, bass. I, I, has... I did the same thing, dude. <laughs> They've been amazing uh, for my fishing, and uh, recently fished the moment. Randy, Randy Blockett, he's awesome. Yeah, they they put out a lot um, of stuff. Yeah, just gave y'all some juice right there. So hope the thirty four y'all watching don't fish our <laughs> events. <laughs> so, um, so to that, like day to day, like what would you say? Um, most of us are weekend guys. Like, what is the difference? And most of our lakes down here have a lot of traffic. What was the main difference you saw between? your weekday fishing and your weekend fishing? Um, for me, it was boat traffic. Um, I was fishing a lot of offshore structure. Well, I say offshore structure, structure and cover. I was finding, I was finding the brush piles on the points and, uh, it was much harder for me on Saturday to get out on these offshore spots and line up my cast and stay in position even with really? the, even with the three, six, even with the 360 drive it was a lot harder for me to to stay in position to make the right casts in these brush piles and uh it was a little bit using my 2d got a lot harder because you got all these waves mm -hmm, like yeah. when you're in that washing machine your bottom the, the bottom on your it's, on your chart looks it's, like it's, a, it's two feet like further a, away like and si then it's like two sine feet waves. closer so you can't, it, it's harder a little bit to tell, especially if you're fishing a rock or a boulder or something. If you, if it's a brush pile, you know, it's three or four feet up off the bottom. You can still tell uh, with it. But um, 
it got to the point where I was, uh, I would just throw out an old marker buoy, like the old orange marker buoy I'd throw out where I'd kind of toss it out behind the boat and then, and then say, okay, I want to position my boat somewhere between this marker buoy and this landmark on an island or on the bank or something like that a old school yeah it, it was very old school because I, I don't have live scope or anything like that so i or spot lock where yeah. i can just sit there and and camp out in one spot and look at the brush pile and see the fish swimming in it so i'm you know i throw the marker buoy out pick a spot on the on the bank and make sure my boat sits between that buoy and that spot on the bank and i know where exactly to make my cast so it's going to hit that brush pile every time and that's obviously how many uh how much time we talked about this with brock and uh brock turner last week and and he said he gives a spot literally one cast he Not rolls guy, up but rolls up one shot if he doesn't get his fish yeah. if he sees him move on sonar he's out of there yeah hmm. for for y'all i mean this is probably one of the big differences between kayak fishing and, and big boat yeah how much time do you give a spot uh, kind of for me, it depended if I got a bite on it. Um, there were certain spots. Well, I, I had a target depth for this tournament too. Um, I don't think for Lanier and Hartwell, they're kind of sister lakes and everybody that goes out and drops brush on Lanier and Hartwell, they want, they seem to want to drop it in 25 to 30 feet of water. But there are there there are brush piles in fifteen to twenty two feet as well. Those were the ones I was targeting because I I think these post spawn fish were transitioning out to their summer haunts, but they hadn't quite made it out to that twenty five to thirty. They were sitting more in that ten to twenty. Really, really kind of mid, targeting mid range. My, targeting my my juice was like seventeen to eighteen feet. That was where if I found one there, it's like I didn't even have to cast. I knew I was going to get bit on it at some point. So, um, that's what I was trying to mark and practice. And then when I went out there and, and, you know, did all that lining up stuff, I would, I would catch them okay. best out of that. You knew, knew that's where you were going. Yeah. Now are you fishing mainly for spots then? Yeah. Or I didn't, I didn't catch there? a single large mouth in the, in the tournament. Not okay. one. I did catch one in practice on top water. One, I found one busting, uh, in a Marina that I, that I caught. And then Travis, did you do you have a mix? You had some of some of each, or well, it, it just depends. One? If you're on the main lake, you know, uh, I'm definitely gonna. If I know there's fish there, I'm gonna sit there and and throw every bait I got at it and, and see if I can get a bite. So um, that's what I did on the Lanier, Lanier tournament. It didn't work out well, but um, you know, at Hartwell, I was in a creek, so you know, I I'm trying to move pretty quick when I'm paddling up and paddling down. Um, but I did have, you know, this one spot where I just, I literally sat there for five hours and every, you know, 30 minutes I would get a bite. Um, I might have to change up to a Ned rig with a, you know, natural shad uh, stick bait on it. Um, you know, instead of throwing my chatter bait and swim jig, which they probably seen a hundred times. But, um, you know, my biggest bite came off of a, a Kai Tech, you know, just on a, on a swim bait head. And I'd throw my swim jig in there for an hour straight, literally making a hundred casts. And I throw that Kai Tech, you know, a little bit more finesse, throw it by 18 and a half inch spot on the second day. Um, when I thought, you know, Hey, I'm not even gonna catch a limit today. Um, so then after that, you know, I started throwing Ned rig, uh, with a little stick bait, catch my five. And then I, I could never get rid of my 14 inches, but you know, I'm sitting there milking it because I can't, yeah. I can't just run down the lake to another spot. Yeah. Yeah. And I only spent that half day or so on the main lake marking all these brush piles. So I only, my milk run was really only like maybe 10 or 12 brush piles. So I couldn't afford just to bounce around making one cast on a brush pile. Like there was one certain one. I, I lost a big fish the first day on one of, one of these piles. And I went back on the second day and I spent an hour on that one brush pile just making the same cast over and over. You caught it? I, I, no, I caught a 16 out of it, but I didn't catch that mm. 19 or 20 or whatever it was I lost. So there's a good question from, from Michael Temples. How many? I, How many Hart rods? Hartwell, I took nine. Travis? The first day I took two rods. No way. 
I took two rods because I knew what they were eating and that was my better day. And then the second day I took six and it wasn't as good. Second so, day I, I took less. I think I still think I took like six or seven, but I, I used three rods the second day of the tournament. I had it. I had a top water tied on just in case I saw something schooling. And then I had a drop shot and a shaky head. All right. And then you were swim, swim jig, swim jig, swim bait, swim jig, net swim rig. jig, kai tech, uh, and shaky head and, uh, and stick bait with on a, uh, on a net rig. All right. Yeah. But that swim, just swim jig was number one. Uh, like, it, it switched on day two. The water got a lot uh, more clear. I didn't catch any on swim jig. Really? So, you know, in practice on day, day one, you know, the water was the right color. And then, you know, that it hadn't, I guess it rained, you know, that week, maybe Wednesday. It rained, yeah. It rained like Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday. And, that week. you know, Friday was perfect. Uh, and then it just, it kept getting clearer and clearer. And I, I think it, they get a little bit more spooky, uh, and then you got to just go a little bit more finesse and, um, couldn't find the big bite on Sunday, but enough to cash a check, which was awesome. Yeah. yeah. How many places did that thing pay out? 15. I got 15. the last check. <laughs> you got the bubble man. Yeah. Good for you. Hey, but I was, I was in, uh, I was in 46 after day one. Yeah. So Huge I jumped jump. 15. Yeah, that's a big jump. Yeah. So what kind of paddle? I, I got to go with Warner. Your Warner Warner guy is Skagit, Tybee. Came, came from the um from the Whitewater world and they just they make the best paddles. Yeah. I back when I was in the Whitewater game, I used Werner too. I got bending branches now. You're but branches I mean down. I have a pedal drive, but so I don't use it very much. But so. uh if I'm on the I eleven if, you still if I'm want on the, one, I think it's if I'm on the I eleven, which is Hobie's inflatable kayak, I paddle it a lot, and it paddles great. It handles great with a paddle, and uh, I use the uh, Ben and Branches Angle, Angler okay. Pro. I was a Werner guy as well. Um, gotcha. If I could find one in stock anywhere, I need a new one. But <laughs> <laughs> it's been uh, it's been a difficult thing out here in Corona World. Um, I've been borrowing a paddle. I'm sure that Erica Delano would would like it back at some point. <laughs> um. um so you guys are on Hartwell. I don't know. Would you go back? You would. Uh, no, I'd go back. Did you guys fish yeah. out there regularly? Or that was my first time. So you've never seen it before, and you no. put up. Put no, up but number. but I know I know how similar it is to Lanier. So you guys would would both say then? See, I've always fished it like I would fish Lanier too, and I've never done well there. Well, well I it's, went, it's always my, beat me my, up. My first thing I did was I. I I, I wanted there, I really, really wanted there to be a good herring spawn still going on, even if I was on the tail end of it. Uh, when I went out there and I, I, I started out doing the exact same things I would do during, during a herring spawn with my top water and my double fluke rig and all, all that stuff. And I just couldn't make it work. So I ended up, ended up, you, you like the donkey rig, your donkey rig guy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It works for you. It works. The donkey rig is, is like my whopper plopper. Like Danny, like Danny's Danny, whopper, Danny, plopper. yeah, or like Danny's water plop, whopper plopper. Like I, yeah, it looks so good. I've never caught a fish on it. I've never seen a fish caught on it. Really, never even tried it. I Weird. saw Tacticals video on it. He's, yeah, no, he's I've, I've, seen, I've seen them talk about it. Like I was out with a buddy of mine um, on Lanier summertime. Uh, we we pulled up on a point bass going off. He caught a four and a quarter on a single rig fluke and he had a double rig and I started throwing that and they were water exploding grenades everywhere. Could not get a sniff, <laughs> like not even a look. My, and I just, it just shook my confidence. I got good bites on it during the peach state tournament. Okay. I mean, cause that's exactly, that was April 24th. That is prime herring spawn. Like if you could hand pick a weekend to go to Lanier, yeah, that's no, that, was, that was prime time. It was awesome, but I kept getting short struck and I kept missing fish on it that day. It was a comedy of errors with with the yeah. double fluke rig that day, and, and I should I should have done way better was, in that tournament. I was I was a mess in the early morning. <laughs> I had I had two absolute dinosaurs try to eat a, a swim bait, and they both just a little bit short. They swatted that tail yeah. and were gone, and no follow up shot. They yeah. were just and that fluke, whether it's a double fluke rig or or a single, that's I swear like. 
you're either going to get short struck or you're going to have the most violent strike you've ever seen in your life on, on those on those things. If you're working at like if you're working at like a top water walking bait, I swear that and a, a, a fluke on top and a pop are get draw the most violent strikes that I've ever seen, like more so than a frog to me. Really? Yeah. I'm looking forward to June on Lanier. I'm going to go out there in my boat and see if I can get some of that top water action. Like, dude, now's the time to get you a striper. Oh, oh, I got I, the striper. That's what. That's why I had to abandon top water at Hartwell because the stripers took over my starting area. Um, oh, really? I caught a I caught a huge striper first morning of the tournament. I was like, "Well, this was awesome, but it was a waste of time." <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to feel. It's hard to feel good about catching one in a tournament. Yeah, it's super it's fun. fun. It's fun. <laughs> it's super. It's super fun. But yeah, you're you're in that same boat now. Oh, man, that took a long time. Like, yeah. it didn't, didn't it's like a sleigh there. ride on a kayak. Oh, it's the the first one I ever caught pulled me probably 150 yards. I'm not sure. I'm not sure he really noticed me for the I first couple sharing, three minutes. Like, I was sharing the point I started out on with a bass boat, and this thing was just pulling me straight toward him. I'm like, sorry, dude. <laughs> can't do anything can't, about it. Can't do it. Yeah. Well, my I don't want to lose my Sammy. <laughs> yeah, right. Hard to break off in the kayak, too, though, because you're, you're light. Yeah, you're, yeah, it's hard your, to put it's hard, part of the drag system. Yeah, it's hard to put that much heat on him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to that, I mean, that's a big difference between like kayak fishing and boat fishing. And what would what would you guys say kind of the biggest difference between being in the kayak and being in the boat? Like the thing you can do in a boat that just the kayak or maybe the thing that makes you prefer the kayak over the boat. Shit, not tearing. Oh, I'm not supposed to say that. Stuff <laughs> no, not, go on. Just stuff, lay it. Stuff not tearing up. Lay it out there. <laughs> cost, cost of ownership. Yeah, cost of ownership. <laughs> things don't tear up as much on a kayak. I I just recently got my boat, so it's like I, I still don't even know how to fish out of it yet. A honeymoon I, period. I know what I'm doing in my kayak. I know where my stuff is, and I know when I hook a fish, how it's going to feel. And you know, my boat, I just I don't know how to position it yet. Um, you know, that's yeah. the hardest part is boat positioning. I think. I like, you said it, the kayak becomes part of the drag system. I've had that problem. Yep. Like striper yeah, fishing with and, friends. Well, like you, you, you just beef up your uh, beef up your action on your rod. Like if you're you can you can use a fast action rod where you're using a, a moderate fast or something on, on, out of a bass boat. Like you know you can you can crank with a faster action rod. Yeah, and I hammer down the drag on most of my yeah. rods unless I'm finesse fishing, and you know that that fish pulling you will will tire out yeah <laughs> you back off when you start getting him close mm. yeah i don't have that one 180 drive reverse uh well you got the 360 so i can't back out and pull yeah. fish out of cover so i just get pulled right in just go yeah, to there, him go get him yeah there was one in practice i was i was on a big i was on a big like wind break like big break wall and uh that was that was that double I had the the unintentional double. Oh, with the striper and the striper and the largemouth. Yeah, <laughs> um, I'd I'd hooked a largemouth on a on a walking bait, and I I had a Demiki hanging off the side of my boat, and while I'm landing this largemouth, this like probably eight pound striper comes and just smokes the Demiki rig that's hanging off the side of my kayak. It was like 2.8 kayak on a Demiki. The striper they'll, just they'll do it. <laughs> absolutely smokes it. Nearly, nearly pulls the rod off out yeah. of my boat. So when I'm sitting did. here with I'm sitting here with a large mouth on this rod. It's like big which, striper which, on this which, rod. Which one did you want? <laughs> yeah, I got That's them both. A good question there. How long do we fish for in kayak tournaments? Safe light to three usually. About about the same as a bass boat tournament. About about nine hours. I kayak fish for it so um how long have you guys been tournament fishing or what kind of got you where did where did you start i guess with with tournament fishing i started with real crazy actually my first tournament was a saltwater tournament i, I bought my kayak in uh, i believe it was 2014 and uh, my wife and i were going to visit a friend in charleston and i was going to go take my kayak and go try to catch a redfish and uh i was looking at these I was looking on Facebook at kayak groups uh, just to see if I could get a little bit, you know, a little bit of friendly info or something, you know, from somebody coming out of town. And there's this uh, low country kayak anglers out of Charleston. They were having their annual redfish tournament. So I was like, yeah, whatever. I'll jump in. I'll, I'll donate. So I actually, I didn't skunk that day though. I never fished in saltwater out of a kayak and I was able to catch a redfish that day. So 
that's cool. That was my first tournament, and then then I came back and got into real crazy. Okay. Yeah, for and me for it you? was it was uh I don't know how I figured out about Drew Gregory's river bassin, um, but I had been fishing out of my whitewater kayak. So I started out with that and uh, I had this old kayak I I drilled a piece of wood into and put rod holders on and I was going up fishing Hollis Latham for ten years before I knew what a kayak uh fishing, mm -hmm. fishing tournament kayak. was. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, I'd go up there with my grandpa uh probably three times a week i'd go up there fishing the north end of hollis latham and just the only thing i ever threw was a was a, a popper and a texas rig green lizard and caught some giants in there there are some big fish in the <laughs> yeah I've so been, i've only been to latham once but i caught a nice spot out of there when i did That's when i went oh they're in there for sure they're in there um, <laughs> But I, yeah, I, I heard about Drew Gregory's events and, you know, they're, they were different. You could fish any place within a 50 mile radius and any river you wanted. Um, so okay. it's a little went, more regional flavor. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, so, it's all, and it's all current based. Yeah. Yeah. yeah as long as you, you, it could be a slow river, but as long as there was current in it, it was, he considered it a river. Yeah. yeah. Considered it legal water. So I, I fished a few of those too back in the day. And then how did you get drawn into the, kind of the the national was there a progression there or did you just decide to definitely the, the money was big and you just took the jump or uh, it was definitely after that after i went into drew's i was like uh, i somehow found out about real crazy and peach state and the first tournament i did was a joint real crazy and peach state uh, on the lower etowah and if I remember correctly, I would have got third, but I had a stringer in every fish's mouth. So I got a one inch deduction on every fish. Yeah, because Drew let you do that, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, Drew's Drew's uh, his rules were a little bit more relaxed, and uh, so I I remember that like yesterday. But I was like, okay, I got to read the rules. Uh, but that was my first tournament. I still I was like, yeah, penalize me. I broke the rules. Um, yeah, but I was hooked after that. I was like, and it was a thirty dollar entry fee. You know, just coming into it, it's not. Yeah, it's local stuff's the way to go if you want to get into it. Yeah, sure. yeah. And you know, and you, we got a lot of good clothes. You don't have to buy a bass boat. You could literally fish out of a two hundred dollar Walmart kayak and win some pretty like over a thousand dollars. Uh, in pretty much all of our tournaments. Yeah, yeah. As, as long as the as long as the attendance stays good. Yeah, you know, you're gonna 30, get some pretty good people. payouts for first place. But uh, with me, uh, 2015, the real crazy season. Um, I, I fished with them and they were affiliated with KBF. Uh, so they're, you know, top, top seven or top 10 or something like that. And the AOI got sent to the national championship. So I qualified for it uh, that first year I fished and, and went up there and, and a lot of it for me was, just, it was just like a, it was just like a, a fishing trip for me with the guys. Cause I'd made friends with, with Jason Hopper and, and Jim Clark and, and right. Jim Ware and all these guys that were fishing real crazy at the time. And, uh, you know, it was a bunch of good dudes and went up there natural, and, natural to make the move. Yeah. The natural fit, man. It's it just, it, just a bunch of uh, guys I liked hanging out with anyway, just going on a fishing trip and with a chance to, with a chance to so win come out a little, little bit of money yeah That's and cool. we got to we got to we got to see clint henderson just about pull it out that yeah. that year so it and he was of course fishing the club at the time so we were all we were all just i never will forget that first way in man when the one that matt ball won and clint got second uh and we were all just we were so stoked for clint and, and yeah. we were all on pins and needles so it was cool clint's a good guy yeah <laughs> so we are uh Reaching the two-hour mark here, we'll start to start to wind it down, um, and we will remember to do all the things that we should do. And you guys, you're nice enough to join us. Uh, Travis, do you have anybody that you want to shout out? Anybody you're pro staffing for? YouTube channel, Instagram? No, I wish I wish I had some of those, but you know, pretty much the only person I want to thank is my wife because uh, I could not have gone without her. Uh, she was watching our good man. She's she was watching our very tough to handle uh almost two year old uh who's exactly like me, stubborn and uh and our six month old daughter. So uh she had them for three days while I was off fishing and I owe her big time. 
You keep cashing checks. You, you know, somebody, <laughs> that's, somebody's that's gonna diaper, notice. That's diaper money right there. <laughs> yeah, somebody's gonna notice. You you cash you've cashed more checks, I think, in national events than I have in, within this last year. But between the KBF national championship and and this last Hobie tournament, and I appreciate that, uh, Andy. Yeah, yeah. It's like you, there. What's funny about us? You talk about the way we break down water. <laughs> I, I decided I was not going to fish the KBF national championship on Gunnersville uh, last year. And, and he was fishing it and he was kind of picking my brain about some stuff. And uh, he, he sends me a pen on a map. I was like, yeah, I've fished that rock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like yeah, we break down water pretty similar. Uh, it so, always, it, it's it, and the same thing happened. 67,000 acre lake. Same lake. rock. He sends me the rock I fished the previous year. <laughs> yeah. in the term. Not the creek, but the rock. He's like, I caught a five pounder off of that. <laughs> <laughs> so when you went, did you go there for the tournament? No, because uh, I heard there was 15 kayaks in that <laughs> creek. I found a creek that was about half the size, and I was the only one fishing it. And nice. So I ended up, uh, that three-day tournament ended up in 18th, uh, which I was really happy about. Okay. So, Yeah. That's, the news got out so, about your rock, man. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. There, um, I was, it's a, it's back there. I mean, it's a three and a half mile kick or paddle from the mm -hmm. nearest ramp. So, I mean, there's must a rock. Be, there. Must be a good rock. There's a rock in a creek. It's back there. But yeah, there's, there's more than just that rock in that creek. There's some, you know, some feeder creeks coming in and points yeah. and stuff. But it, it's, it's good. It's area. probably good when the water's high, but the water was low. Um, okay. Those creeks were dry. So I think the, the fish in that tournament in October were more on the main river. Um, Pulled out. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So, Mr. Middleton, I, I know you've got a, a list. I got a few. Get, I got it, a get few. them out there. Get them in. I want to give a shout out to Jasper Jeep and um, Dugout Bait and Tackle down in Marietta, uh, Hobie, uh, Afco Spro, Gamakatsu, Nichols Lures, uh, St. Croix Rods, and I hope I'm not forgetting Seagar. I believe I, I believe yeah. I've I've covered it there, but right. uh, yeah, I've been been fortunate to get in with some with some good companies, and a lot of that's uh, you know a lot of that's part of my affiliation with the dugout. It's been it's been a great relationship with them. I've been shopping there uh, long before they got into the kayak game, so I've, I've known right. Jamie and Craig and those guys for a while. They're Your they're good, wifey? good dudes, and of course of course my wife and my kids can cannot forget about that. They uh, uh, hold down the fort at home. Uh, when I'm at uh, these, I, and I, I said it during the Hobie Awards, I said, you know, that it's, uh, you know, makes a big difference when you know you don't have to worry anything, worry about anything back at home for sure. Really? Yep. Well, I'd like to thank you guys so much for joining us, giving us a little bit of your time, letting us pick your brains on kayak fishing, kind of uh, your process, your thought process, and what you guys did to bring home a little folding money on Hartwell. So yeah, we a good time. We really appreciate it. Thank you guys. I appreciate y'all coming out. And so that is going to do it for this episode of the show at fish North Georgia. We talked hot baits. We talked plastic boats. We talked about our good friends at Cassie state farm agency. No Bruco provided. It's a big some can. Delicious. It is a big can provided some delicious libations. And of course you guys provided us a wonderful audience. Go get on them this weekend. Good fishing. Be safe out there. Take care.